back in the saddle once again for another edition of the Grunge Bible Podcast. This is episode number 152 coming to you here in the month of February. My name is Chris Salona, and here's Ethan Shalloway. We're pretty fired up to be here today. Absolutely. Sunday morning recording coming out the next Quick day. turnaround. Less, t- less than 24 hours is perfect. And um, yeah, it was solid. You know, I like doing the weekend podcast, having the quick turnaround. It feels like yeah. it's just, you know, bada boom, bada bang type of thing. Yeah, they feel and, great. Uh, yeah, doing well. So how are you doing, Chris? I'm good, man. Um, Let's check we got, in. We got a little holiday weekend action coming up here because of President's Day. So I don't work uh, on ah, Monday. President's I don't, Day. Nice. I don't work tomorrow. Yes. So So I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I'm good. I had I had a good week. I uh, yesterday, no, two days ago, I set new personal bests in the snatch and clean and jerk. So I'm excited about that. That's awesome. Yeah, I had a, I had a really good week. It was fun. Um, so I'm 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 in a I'm in a quality mood here today. How are you? The double PR, man. Double Love PR, that. yeah, man. Snatch and jerk, the clean and jerk. That's that's huge. Yeah, I felt As, pretty good about that. And it's interesting. You're like, the best I had you've a, ever been. Best I've ever been, and you can't say that every day, as yeah. as we always like to remind ourselves of. And it's, you know, I hadn't I hadn't PR'd in those movements since 2019, and then I finally PR'd. Really? La- yeah, I hadn't PR'd since November. Um, so like I went like I went like four years basically without PRing, and then in November of 2023, I PR'd both of them. And okay. here we are in February of 24, and I'm I'm continuing to climb up, and it certainly won't be the last of this year. I've got. Some goals. I want to. I want to try to total three hundred kilograms between the two of them. That would be fun. Um, yeah. So I got twenty five kilos to go. You're closest you've ever been. Exactly, man. Know? So we're on that horse. And it feels good to just, you know. I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to, you know, make a team or anything or perform or win anything. But it's fun to fucking, yeah, you know, have some skin in the game and and see see where you can go with certain physical pursuits. So that'll always your, be a part of my life. It's your personal legend. Exactly. That you're a part of. You're 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 going to achieve your personal legend, and there's yeah. a lot of value in that. Yeah, I'm the main character, and I'm That's telling right. my story. So how how are you, Ethan? How how are we doing today? Doing well, doing well. Um, pretty light weekend as far as you no know, travel, which is good. I need a weekend off. And, yeah, that's always good. Um, yeah, and next weekend will be the same. So yeah, like I said, the script has been good to me. Um, this week I was a little bit more. A little bit more sore. My back gave me a little trouble, but other than that, um, it was really, uh, it's been great. So great. the weather's getting warmer. Um, mm-hmm. That's helping with the mood. And I feel very, you know, creative and curious these days and a lot of mm-hmm. thinking and trying to figure out um, how to spend my time and, and be diligent. So, yeah. you know, it's that inspiration time that we love to talk about. And Absolutely. Yeah, you, you gotta bottle it up and be able to use it when you need it. So yeah, it sure is. And uh, trying to, to figure di- out where to go, you know. Yeah, I mean, we can go anywhere we want. And um, I think you know, with those sentiments in mind, today's conversation, uh, the interview that we had today, is uh, you know one of the best places to turn to. And today, yeah, uh, we had uh, the photographer and friend of ours, Chris Cafaro, uh, the guy for everything. You know, not just the grunge guy, not not just the the uh, George Michael guy. I mean, this man is seen and done it all and he's been a really really helpful presence in our lives uh, as it concerns grunge bible and life really um so we had him on today uh who it's, it's been a while since we've had him on but he was the first interview that we ever recorded for grunge bible um so it's great to to turn back and and catch up with him again here on the show you know not just on the phone or or, or in texts so um really good conversation today kind of talking about bunch of different things, uh, namely photography, music, art, how to make things that last. Um, Also a little bit of uh, dating advice naturally, because, you know, you always have to turn there. Um, But before uh, before we thank the people we have to thank and before we ultimately get into the episode, I do have to say this is a checkpoint. And there are two things that I would like you to do if you are listening right now. Um, If you have Instagram, uh, go over and follow Chris. Uh, I'll link his Instagram in the show notes, but it's at the Kafaro photo. Uh, throw him a follow uh, because he just puts up all iconic shit all the fucking time. Uh, And then for bonus points, go over to the app store or the Android app store, whatever the shit it's called. I don't know. Uh, And go ahead and download Chris Cafaro greatest hits. It is his new app, uh, which is an extension of his life's work. It's got videos, stories behind the photos. It's got photos, 
whole bunch of information. It's a really, really cool app. So I think you should go and check that out. I've spent a lot of time on there since he's uh, released it recently. Yeah. It's like a gallery in your phone. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like, you can't get to the, the, sh the gallery in LA or in Australia. You can go right there and get a lot of great on demand, great stories. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's important. I love, we talked a lot about compiling and uh, your work over the years and mm -hmm. having it live on. And Kafaro is that guy when you need, yeah. like he is all about, you know, the organization, the prioritizing and uh, finding a way to keep it, keep it relevant, keep it nice for him to go back and look on. And um, yeah, it was a good conversation. Maybe I'm probably, I'm more inspired now because we just finished that conversation. Me obviously. too. Yeah. I, I, I love Chris. Um, he's just, he's really special to both of us and really grateful that we're able to continue to have these conversations with him. Um, and we're able to do that because people support us financially. Um, you know, because nothing is free here in this world of ours. Uh, and we are thankful for everybody that has chosen to buy merchandise, everyone that has chosen to support us over on Patreon at any of the three tiers that we have, $2, $5, or $10. Um, and at this time, I would like to read, as I usually do, the list of $10 per month supporters on Patreon. Uh, so thank you to Black Hole Sean, The Blue Owl, Kara K, Corden Stewart, D-Boat, Doug Endy, down in a hole, flat out fucked. Eddie Vedder got me through my second divorce. Go to John, fuck soup, Faith Bittner, Eric R. Berry, Epona, Granny Grunge, Jade Mercado, Jamie Lynn, Carlene Salona, Chris LSMS, King Buzzo stole my hair, Keith White, Laura Nyrene, Millie, Nikki Six, Pile of Punk, What the Fuck is Up, Denny's, Sherry Matthews, Russell, and Seattle Four fanboy from New Jersey. That was a little bit of a tough read. I got kind of kind of <sighs> spitty halfway through that, and I didn't want to pause. Uh, but yeah. we, you know, we we recovered, dude. Yeah, you cracked, and yeah, you recovered. That's really good. It's like Richard Manuel was easy. able to do. It's not easy. It's, People it's think that it is. There. Unless you've had the experience, uh, you don't know what it's like. And this is not pre-recorded. We do not. We do not have anything saved. The intro we is do not it, saved. We do it live every it's, we do it fucking live week. Every time, yes. And some people, we've been told, you know pre-record stuff no that takes away what we're trying to do here and that's be authentic men of music and that's what we are uh and that's okay. who chris is he is an authentic man and uh one more editorial note um i'm just gonna level with everybody uh today's this day in music history fucking sucked so we're not even <laughs> gonna mention it i don't want to talk about any of the things i was grasping at straws uh did i say that grasping at straws yeah um yeah uh, we don't need to talk about it Simon and Gar Garfunkel uh, record, <laughs> The Sound of Silence. That's all you need to know. <laughs> yep. On this day, they recorded it in 1964. Um, that's yeah, really that's all so you fun. need to know. Um, More that. importantly, um, you know, in the beginning, yeah, Chris gives great sage uh, romantic advice uh, throughout the years. And I love that. Coming off the heels of Valentine's Day, that's important. Yeah. I think without further ado, let's just get into it and hear a nice raw conversation with the man, Chris Cafaro. people i tell all my young friends all the time that you hear me bitch and complain about life or you work or just the world whatever and everybody thinks oh chris you're just crazy and i get that because i would say the same thing but i always tell people you won't understand what i what's in my head right now until you're my age so around when you're 60 and i'm dead and gone you're going to be going you know what you're going to look at each other going you know what chris was annoying as fuck but he was right yeah, I've actually kind of been thinking about this recently. Some weird, yeah. weird stuff. Like I was thinking about like the midlife crisis because you know I'm 30, you're 28, oh. Chris, and or not yet, we yeah. will be. So. But like, uh, <laughs> just thinking how people like they want to completely start a new chapter and you have, and you can do something totally different with the second act of your life. Basically, yeah. it could be whatever. And uh, it was funny. One of the questions I wrote down. This would be a good one for you, Chris, because uh, you're single still, right? Yeah, I'm smart. <laughs> So do you think that ex-girlfriends are a good thing or a bad thing in life? Well, 
we're are we, this is this is not the episode, right? Oh, this is this is a part of the episode. <laughs> oh, <is> it? <laughs> oh, yeah, with that we got this Chris Cafaro on the line. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is all part of it, dude. This is this is the start. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, I I hate you guys. Um, <laughs> so I think it depends. So I reconnected reconnected about I don't know five years ago with an ex girlfriend. Um, and I, she was literally my first girlfriend in LA. I was around yeah. 24, 25. Wow. And she was my first girlfriend. We are friends. Like I just talked to her three days ago. She lives down in Orange County. One of my besties. I, I love her to death. And we reconnected about five years ago and we, we talk and like a, a couple of days ago, I talked to her because I, she, you know, like what I love about having friends like her and she knows this is that she knows my backstory. I don't have to give her a backstory to why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. I don't have to go, oh, this is why I'm feeling. Oh, now here's a reason right. why. She knows all that shit. So it saves me a lot. of. It's like talking to a therapist that knows all your backstory as opposed yeah. to explaining why you're angry or why this is bothering you, you know? Um, how, long, how long did you guys date? Probably a good couple years, maybe. Right. No, no, no. What am I saying? No, not even. Not even a year. Okay. Not even a year. Um, but she... she uh, she was uh, my first, you know, I guess in LA. And uh, like I said, I love the fact that we're friends to this day. Uh, I, she just visited me re- uh, a few months ago when she was up here and we caught, had a lot of laughs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. the best for, the, the for, thing for me, for me personally was the fact that, you know, she, uh, I told her after we broke up, I guess I said to her, like, you, you, every boyfriend you had ever after me was a loser because you'd peaked with me and <laughs> she, she couldn't argue that it was downhill after me. It's undisputed. <laughs> so, you know, I'd like to think that anyways, but yeah, I mean, I was, I was thinking, you know, cause I'm single and, uh, you <laughs> well, know. I, I tell people all the time this cause I am older and stuff is that I'm not saying everyone, and I'm not going to generalize because I hate generalizations, but a lot of my friends that are married, older and married and been married for years are not happy. Mm. And, and they, and a few of them will, you know, the guys will always be, God, Chris, you're so lucky to be single and not have kids and not have all that stuff. And they, uh, they pat me on the back and they, they're a little jealous uh, yeah. because you know, getting married and, and and having that kind of commitment and long, you know, I always tell everybody, everything is temporary in life and even marriage. I mean, you, we all like to have the fantasy. You're going to fall in love and live happily ever after. And it's going to stay the same forever. And you're going to be, oh, we're going to be love forever until we're, we're 80 and 90 and die. No. And then you, you know, it all, it all changes. And then, uh, you know, it's just life. It's human nature to change. I think you see so many people too. Like uh, it just becomes like a pragmatic choice to stay together. Like, I mean, yeah. the age that we are, like all of our friends, parents, like you can totally tell like those couples, it's like they just stayed together because it would be too big of a to do to yep. separate because you've got the kids, you've got the financials, you've got everything right. tied together. Because like you said, people, people grow so much over the course yeah, of the life. Everybody I know, every friend of mine, I know that's been married 10 to 15 years with children never have sex they're like just roommates you know what yeah. i mean and a teamwork of keeping the family going you know in a sense and Stay they don't have sex the there's no love in their real like love but you know and i look at it and i, I always tell that's the way i feel about my parents i mean my my parents are dead but my parents got married when they're 18 and and wow. i can't believe that they were married their whole lives and until they died and you know i used my joke used to be they probably only had sex four times and that was to have four kids and then <laughs> that was it, you know? And I don't know. I I'm, and I'm saying it's, you know, I can give you a lot of reasons why being single is great and, and being single sucks. I mean, there's a lot right. of like, I, you know, I always say to people when, when I die, who's going to take care of me or my work. And, you know, I had to build a trust and get that taken care of. So it's taken care of. So I have not, nobody to leave this stuff to in a sense. So it, there's mm -hmm. pros and cons of all of it. Right. It's the different roads, obviously, of life. Yeah. Um, but I, but I, I recommend, was... you know, I tell people, all the guys, especially all the time, I can't believe this is going to go on a podcast, but I'm going <laughs> to, I recommend all guys to just to get really filthy, filthy rich. And then just... <laughs> yeah, that's the easy part. You just take care of that. And then everything. Then else you're just like, you can place. do whatever you want. And yeah. then you can just, 
have relationships, what we call, you can lease relationships. You, you meet a girl, <laughs> you're my, I'm going to lease you for two years. Yeah. When the lease is up, I'll trade you in for a younger version. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how like old guys do it here in Hollywood. Oh, you know, absolutely. Right? All the time. I mean, the it's age like lease with an option to buy and you never buy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was, I mean, not exactly what I was thinking, but like, if, so if you're, <laughs> you know, if you're, say you're, you know, 60, how old, how old are you, Chris? If you don't mind me, at, this is, this I'm won't 60, go on the podcast. I'll be, no, six, I'll, be six, I'll be, I'll be 64 in April. So yeah, like, would you want to be 64 and have no history, like no ex-girlfriends throughout the years? Or like you looking back, like the ex-girlfriends are important to your life. So you want to like, right. it's good to have, it's good to have had those moments and those like three or four year spans throughout your whole life. Like imagine like if I go through and I haven't been in a relationship in a while, but I don't have any relationships or whatever. I can't look back and, and I don't know, be happy about a, a period of time. So I was, well, I was, I was deep about it. Yeah. It's different for everybody. And then, you know, you prioritize cause you're, you know, working on your athlete or school. Yeah. Like it's hard to have. And again, I say to people all the time, you don't really have your best relationships till I say mid thirties, because like I, the, I've met the love of my life when I was 33 and we were together six and a half years. And and I tell people all the time, like, in your, like all, you know, all my friends are girls, right? And I talk to them all the time. And my, my intern, who's 19, has a 22-year-old boyfriend. I yell at her all the time. Like, <laughs> remember, don't, this is not forever. This is just, this is just tr practice. This is just training. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, you can't look, look at it as like, oh, this is going to be, no, just use them for training. And then you build, work on from there. You know, like, it's not that way. Um I, I, everybody I know that ever got serious in their twenties is, you know, that didn't, they never last long. Yeah. It's so tough. Cause like, there's only so many hours in a day. And I mean, even from your experiences, Chris, like building your career and hustling and just working nonstop. I mean, there's, there's not enough time for other elements of your life because you make that choice. It's like, right. you know, I want to be really good at this thing. And I want to, you know, chart my path as a photographer, for example. Um, you know, you, you don't have time to nurture other areas of your life and it's, you know, it's tough choices everybody has to make, but you know, you end up making them and it takes you where it takes you. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. It's you, you, like I tell people all the time, you know, I chose to do this when I was 10. I knew even then I knew I was going to have to make sacrifices and I have so many, uh, whether it's relationships, yeah. whether it's life itself, health sacrifice, you know, if you really want something bad enough, you're going to have to make sacrifices. It doesn't come that easy. I yeah. think too, though, that like, uh, like I said, I, my experiences are, are not just in, in life and relationships and not just my own, but you know, all the people around me and, and you guys know, like 90% of my friends are women. And I have two right now that I'm helping through one just left her husband. Another friend just left her husband a year ago. And I've been literally mentoring her for over a year now, getting her through the different phases of her relationship. She was with the worst guy on the planet, the biggest narcissist guy on the planet. And now she's rebuilding her life and doing amazing amazing she's really doing the work i just i don't know relationships you know i always tell people it like i said lease with an option to buy and don't buy <laughs> keep those options open exactly never go to court always settle <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> that's it's good so, that way. so we're going to get into a bunch of uh obviously a, a little bit of photography are we going to talk about photography talk about. and grunge or are we just going to talk about relationships the relationships it's, it's, it's a lot of relationship <laughs> advice um today i mean it is valentine's uh you know we're Season. in the wake of valentine's yeah, yeah so exactly we had to we didn't really do much of a special last week so this All is right, Ethan, special let's talk about your life. feelings today okay? how are you feeling <laughs> i'm feeling awake <laughs> um so I, I want to ask, so, you know, a little, you're a little bit older in your career, obviously, and you have yep, a way to so rub much, it in. <laughs> yeah, but you have, and me and Chris talk about, like, we're, we're trying to say, develop a poster, develop the next, like, kind of stuff that we can create. And you have this body of work that spans all the way back to when you were a teenager. Um, and we're going to get into like how it was when you were doing it. But now that you look back and you have all this stuff that reminds you, takes you back to a very specific place, time, smells, feelings. Like, what does that mean to you when you get to look back and you get to see your work? And although it may not be, you know, revered the way you want it to, or obviously it's never going to mean as much to anybody but you, really. Right. Like those photos. Like, I, that is a special thing for you that you are going to have this connection to. So when you look back at your work, like, how does that make you feel? <laughs> that sounds well, bad. Like, I, like it's now funny. I get like that, but like, 
Yeah, no, but it's funny you ask that because it goes it goes down to to when I started the Greatest Hits project, which you guys know about, you know, right. doing these exhibitions and stuff, because I wanted to celebrate the insanity of my life in a sense, yeah. the passion, the you know, I fell in love with photography from day one, and so. It's been, I always tell people, I married photography and that's my wife and I do cheat on her now and then, but uh, she does call me back, get your ass back home and get to work. I'm grateful beyond for all of it. Um, the thing that annoys me these days is just that I don't get, and I think this is my whole life story and it has go, goes back to my childhood. I just don't get the respect um, that I feel I deserve. And because though, because nobody knows all that I've done, you guys know 50%. A little bit, yeah. Most people know about 30%. But if everybody saw what I've done in my in my 53 years of shooting, you'd be blown away. Um, and you guys know I shoot under different names. I do create all sorts of things that people don't know about. I've shot, you know, people know me. Like I get mad at Instagram because I'll post a picture of Allison Chains and I get a thousand likes, but I post a picture of something better and nobody knows that person. I get three likes and it's just yeah. like, God, you people, you know, I, I feel like right now I'm going to boycott, and not do any Allison Chains photos anymore. No, no, no doubt. No Allison Chains, no grunge Stay, like leave, you know, like guys, I've done more than that. And, um, I, I like I said, in the end, I'm grateful for everything. And I people, I just like my line when I do lectures is look, I've never had an easy day, but I've always had fun. And that's that's what I try to preach to all my young photographers. Is just, you know, you're not gonna make a million dollars. You're not gonna be famous. You're not gonna fucking if you're doing this and you guys are doing this because you want to be millionaires, don't do it. Go get a job at Starbucks or, you know, go become a Republican politician and you'll become a millionaire. But if you're doing it because you love it, it brings you joy. Uh, it, also, the big part, of, I think, it's the relationships you build. Like, if you guys right. weren't doing this, you wouldn't know me. If I, you, if I wasn't doing photography, I wouldn't know you. So there's that's the kind of life I've always wanted to live was this rich life. Like I always say, people, I have friends everywhere. Right. And I can go to most cities and just know somebody or somewhere. You know what I mean? And that's, yeah. that's the joy I get out of this, especially with, especially with this greatest hits project, the people I, I know that I can show you my goal list of what I created was the day I started it. I made this goal list and I said in it, in the list was, I want to meet new people and have new experiences. And since then I have, and it's been amazing. I have, you know, I, I think we talked, but I was in New Zealand last year at this time. I did an exhibition in New Zealand. My first, I left New Zealand after four weeks. I have 30 new best friends in New Zealand now. I, I, it's the most amazing musicians I've ever met in my life. Make th the best music I've ever heard mm -hmm. makes um, this shit suck. And just, I love that. That's what I love about my life is that I got these people that I, you know, I, all the experiences. And I think it's so about. cool and it's so inspiring too, because the further you get down any particular road, um, the less and less kind of low hanging fruit there is in terms of like, there's less and less new experiences to be had and new relationships to build because you've had such a large body of work in so many of those experiences. So just like it's twofold because there's the intent and the decision to go out and seek them out, but also to continue to be open to them despite, you know, all of the history that you've had and, you know, trying not to maybe compare different experiences and just always looking for new ones because I mean, that's how you learn and that's kind of how you build like your cachet of, of life almost, you know? Well, so I'll go back to a, a dumb story I've told is, when I was a kid, my grandfather, who was a police detective in the 40s, he would show me this photo album of crime scenes, dead people. And he would tell us the same stupid stories over and over again. You know, yeah, grandpa, we heard that one. Now, fast forward all these years later, I've told my friends, I, I start <laughs> sounding like I was made in the in my group last night. They were making fun of me because everything I said was like, oh, back in my day. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Chris, that's your new nickname is back in the day. And I was like, I start sounding like, and I get really mad. So my whole career I've talked about, so you guys know, and the world knows on my 65th birthday, I'm going to stop. I told, I've said this for 30 years. I'm not going to talk about my music photography that it all ends. Don't ask me about Nirvana after my 65th. Don't ask me about Chris Cornell or Lane Staley. I'm not going to talk about it. 
Right. And I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to sit here on my 80th birthday, sitting on my porch going back in my day, I shot Nirvana. Yeah. It's like, shut the fuck up. And my friends, thank God, tell me to shut up all the time, but I don't <laughs> want to be that. I don't want to live. I want new stories. I want new yeah. experiences. I want to get out and have, keep going, you know? And um, so my joke now, since what last year, my joke now is that if you ask me after 65, Hey, Chris, you shot Nirvana. What was that like? I'm just going to go, dude, go to my app. There's a video. You can watch yeah. that. You know, go to the app, just go to the app. And yeah. that's my plan anyways. So we've got yeah. like 14 months left to talk about this then. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the clock's ticking. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's the truth though. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you have old grandparents, but they, they all talk about the same stuff. I, you know, I, and I, again, I've had an incredible life. I'm beyond grateful. I actually just made a, a deck for my life. Uh, like I broke it down by each year, the highlights of each year, shot this cover, did this shoot, you know, and, it, and I made this deck and I, I, I made it, I sent it to a friend of mine. Cause he's talking to me about writing a book and possibly writing a book. I'm doing a TV series right now. I'm producing a TV series about, it's a docu-series about my greatest hits project. But the fact that like, you know, and just the fact that like there's, I've had all this experiences, I, you know, like I said, I don't take it for granted. And then this, la I think you saw that like this last month or so I've been interviewing, I interviewed Charles Peterson and Lance yes. Mercer, Sante D'Arazio, um, photographers that I look up to and, and just friends, you know, and Michael Levine and I had a good laugh because I've known Michael for years, but I love talking to them because they made me feel good because I was like, hey, I, I'm not the only crazy one, you know, the, mm -hmm. they're just as crazy as me. And they understand your work. At a yeah, level they, that they, we, we both we all understand the life that we've chosen. You know, being yeah. a photographer. Yeah, I have a you know I'm, I'm tracing the Olympics this summer, and uh, we had like a fundraiser. And I sent it, I wrote a letter to people that bought the shirts. I wrote one to Chris, and like he was there when I was training in the beginning. Yeah, and I told him I was like, I, you know, this like I'm doing this for my family, but like you know the story even better than my family does because you lived it and you were next to me when it was when when I was changing and and making yeah. these decisions, and um, it really is wild how yeah some people just know the story deeper and understand it on a much deeper level and like that's who you enjoy talking to the most about it because you don't need to rehash the same conversation. I think with with this page, I mean, we want to do new stuff because yeah, we can only talk about when we started, how we started. Like we've, yeah. we went through those hoops a thousand times and we need new stuff to talk about because yeah, yeah you don't want to keep doing that. But so I, we, I think with your journey in life and speaking as an old guy, you know, in your 30, it's like, honestly, your life is not now, now going to start. I, I can't stress this enough. I've said this, yeah. I've said this for 40 years, your thirties are the best time of your life. Period. The twenties, the twenties are all about learning what you like and don't like right. what's embarrassing and not embarrassing. You learn in your twenties. Hopefully you learn in your twenties that sh taking 10 shots of tequila is not a good idea. <laughs> and then getting, getting in a car and trying to drive is a stupid idea. Right. You know? So I tell people all the time, your twenties, if you survive them, you hopefully will learn. And then that you take that 10 years and you apply that to your thirties and you just, the thirties are the best by far like by far. And I, I, and I live by this motto. I pass it on to all my friends and my, especially all my, my interns and in assistants thing. I always say to them, my motto for life is be crazy, but don't be stupid. Yep. Yeah. Crazy I, I is let's, that. let's do 10 shots of tequila and let, let's get fucked up. Yo, let's go. Stupid is now let's get in the car and drive to the next friend's house or something like that. Or let's think we can do this. And this. no, you know, you just don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I push that on everybody all the time. Be crazy. Cause I, I was told when I was a kid my whole life that I was crazy. I thought my name was crazy because I was, you're crazy. You're, <laughs> I thought that was a bad thing. And then it, it didn't happen. I think when I got to LA and everything, I realized everybody's crazy and it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. It helps you get to a lot of places that those maybe who, who wouldn't feel that way or think that way, you know, don't have the know-how to get to, you know, I mean, yeah. even with your career, it's like, you have to take chances. You have to, you know, you have to move, you have to get yourself into new situations, uh, you know, to be able to have those experiences and learn and, and grow your skills, you know? Yeah. I think it's just like, I don't know. I, I, I approached life at such a, I'm not going to say mature by any means, but like with such a plan at such a young age, knowing that 
I was in this for the long haul. I knowing mm -hmm. that knowing from day one that I wasn't going to be rich and famous until I was dead and gone, mm -hmm. knowing that I had to do the work, knowing that that it wasn't going to be easy, knowing mm -hmm. that, you know, I have a lot to learn, like and yeah. I still do. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm going through a really tough time right now because I'm trying to find help and I can't find help. And so, but does it, you know, it's frustrating, but you know, it but it also motivates me to keep working hard. Yeah. Man, all good advice. A lot of good stuff here. Um, so I got a question for you guys. Yeah. Um, what's up with this new Pearl Jam shit? <laughs> oh, <laughs> here, here it comes. Dark, ma dark matter. This is no, one it's of, called definitely doesn't one of matter. It's called doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> or don't they matter. It's true. What is up? Well, coming off the heels of Gigaton a couple of years ago, um, I think it's going to be better than Gigaton. That's what me and Chris were saying. But <laughs> I and I like what you said about it. How uh, you know the music is just changing, and people are kind of writing differently than yeah. Uh, I think it's a lot with social media and just how things are perceived. You know, there's just such a a drive to be new and edgy and and kind of outside of who you are sometimes. And I hope that the album is not doesn't feel like that. Um, not, I think what's I, I'm not, I I heard the song and I was like to me it was weak. Um, but again, I know I know I had already had to, I've already had some discussions about it with some friends. <laughs> uh, there's a Pearl Jam friend of mine in New Zealand, and she she's a fanatic, and she's just it's the greatest thing ever. And I'm like no 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 no, you know the, bl the blinders are up. Yep. And I, I love my Pearl Jam fans. They, they love that band. And I, I, I respect that, but I don't know. There hasn't been getting anything since 10. So I'm, I'm okay. I think a hard thing, like as a fan, and I can only imagine as, as musicians and as songwriters, like when you get so far removed from that time and place that made you write and, and, and sing about the things that you were singing about, uh, because of the success that you've had and just maturity, right? Because, you know, nobody's the same at 25 as they are at 55 and so on and so forth. And same thing for fans. Like I think about like when I first discovered a lot of the music that's inspiring to me, you know, I was in a different time and it served a different purpose. So, you know, as, as everybody gets older, I think it's so hard to kind of tap back into that um and i always kind of go back and forth it's like well you know should bands keep trying to do that and as fans like should it's we, tough and, and and it's impossible not to compare right it's impossible right. because because it's the same name it's the same band that it's coming from. right but it's us look at music in general it doesn't have to be right just overall like name an artist that created music you know great fresh new music their whole career very yeah. If few, if any, yeah. you know, even, even, you know, the Rolling Stones have been around a hundred years, but they mm -hmm. haven't done anything since 1975. You know right. what I mean? It's like nobody it's, it, I'm not saying it's impossible because a lot of good talented musicians out there. And I think one of my friends, Greg Dooley, I think he keeps put, putting good shit out. Totally. Um, but it's hard. You know, I, it's like, same thing with me as a photographer. Like, Hey, Chris, you took the, the pictures behind you were 1991. It's like, right. have I done anything since? Well, I've done a lot since then, but as it is good, no, maybe not. I don't mm -hmm. know. You know, like I'm a different person than when I shot back then I was 30 now I'm 60. And like, it's, it is different. My biggest problem with music though, is it, as these bands get older, um, I'm jealous because they can play the same 10 songs over and over again and make a million dollars. I can't take the same picture over and over again. Right. No one doesn't work that way. Um, but my biggest complaint though, after my trip to New Zealand is just that I discovered some of the most amazing artists I've ever seen in my life mm -hmm. and nobody knows about them here. Yeah. And that bums me out. And like the music in America right now, I'm not impressed with I, like, there's a couple artists that I love here, some friends, but overall, I'm sorry. Like, you know, if you, if you come with me to New Zealand and you'll see some, I saw a band there, uh, that they're legends. I mean, they're icons in New Zealand and Australia and Europe. Nobody knows about them here. Yeah. And they're called fat Freddy's drop. And they're one of the best band. I got to go see them live. It was one of the best shows I'd ever seen. Okay. They were fucking brilliant. I'm sitting there going, how is this band not, you know, mm -hmm. huge in, in America in a sense? Yeah. And it's because, you know, the way music is here. Uh, 
You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just different. And Pearl yeah. Jam, look, I'm going to say it straight up. I'm, I'm, I love the first record. After that, they lost me. And, um, and good luck to them and happy days. And I mean, I, I talked to Lance about it a little bit, but it's like, I, I just, it's not my thing anymore. But again, right. I was tell, I don't listen to music that much, but when I do, I listen to my high school music. I'm listening to, you know, Confunction and Earth, Wind and Fire and Commodores. I listen to that stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there must be an element too, because like, because music has been so integral and so intertwined with your career, with your oh. work, you know, when you're around my it life. all- when you're around it all the time, like the last thing you want to do is go home. Like, oh, let me, you know, let me, let me, let me put a record on here a little because you've been around it the whole day. So you kind of need that separation at points. No, but you guys, you guys know, like seriously, if you want to, I, that's why I was telling me why I play high school music. I was like, cause it makes yeah. me smile. Yeah. I don't listen to grunge because it's going to make me smile. No, cause it doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. When I listen to, if I listen to anything from the nineties, I'll listen to MTV unplugged, Allison chains, Nirvana, mm -hmm. those two records mainly, you know what yeah. I mean? I think they're brilliant. I think Allison, I think Allison chains, I have them at number one, as far as the bands that come out of the area. Number two, I give to Soundgarden. Number three, you know, is Nirvana. And then number four, Pearl Jam. Mm -hmm. That's my ratings. But yeah. I, 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 but I don't listen to it all that much. If I listen to Allison chains, I want to, do heroin and I don't want to yeah. do heroin. So, um, but it brings back a lot of really good memories. And, you know, I, I'm, I don't know if you can see here, I'm like, I'm scanning photos every day, yeah. you know, of my past. And I go through these shoots and I've been digitally archiving my life. And I find things that just bring back so many great memories. And I'm yeah. beyond like a, when I was talking to Michael Levine about it, just the, how grateful you are, because, you know, I worked hard for it all. It wasn't just given to me, worked yeah. hard for every bit, of, but, I got, I got memories and photos that better than most, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was thinking about this recently too. Like I wish I had more photos and, you know, more videos. And there's a time when it wasn't cool for a little bit to pull out your phone, take camera. Now it's really yeah. norm normalized, but you know, and just, or just like the day to day. Like I remember the Shannon Hoon documentary where he just like videoed himself for yep. a long period of time. And I want some of that shit. Like I, like me and Chris and our producer, yeah, you know, I was like, I want to do a podcast that we never release, that we have for us to look back in like thirty years, and and it won't make sense to anybody, but it's going to make sense to us. Like, but I want, you will have I want this. the in between stuff. Yeah, taking... but but Ethan, you'll have this like thirty years from now. You'll be looking at these things, going, "Oh fuck, we, I can't really believe we did this and what we're at." It's, you're documenting your life. You yeah. know, I, I've documented my whole life since day one. I have a yeah. picture of my the day I was born. You know, to to now. And I think that's, it's different for everybody, but yeah, it's easier to document now than ever in the history of mankind. Oh, for like sure. I, I, like I always say, can you imagine if I had an iPhone in 1991? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but the it's, pictures it's, I would have gotten. Yeah, it's easy. seriously. It's yeah. The, the, the random Snapchats that I have saved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. imagine the shit that, but like, it's easier now, but there's still like, you know, you have, you have way more documentation than I do. You know what I mean? Like, and that's not just because of how long you've been doing it, but there's people that they have more home videos than I do. And it was harder yeah. back then. And I'm like, yeah, right, what, what's the difference? I have this, I have this one video. So when video cameras co started coming out, when they were smaller, not VHS mm -hmm. big ones, but like smaller V, I would think it was called video eight, something like that, high eight or something. And I bought a camera in 1988 before I went to Australia for the first time with George Michael and I bought this camera and I have this video, one tape, I shot one tape and then the camera broke. But the one tape I have is us on the set of the video, his song, one more try, which was directed by Tony Scott. And so I have this whole video of behind the scenes of the, this amazing couple days in the blue mountains. And I get mad when I watch it because I just think, God damn, camera broke. Can you imagine what else I would have gotten, mm -hmm. you know, if it didn't break? And um, and I just, I get mad. There's a photographer. I don't know if you guys know the photographer, Norman Seif, a uh, legendary motherfucking photographer. If you know his pictures, trust me, you Google him, you'll go, oh, I know that picture of Ray Charles and Tina Turner. Like, it's everybody. Yeah. He was one of the, he's done documentary on his work. Uh, he did, he used to film his shoots. He was one of the first photographers that had like shooting BTS you know, and he made a documentary out of it. And Norman, you know, I've never met the man, uh, but I dream about it sometimes. I'm a big fan, but he just documented all his stuff too. And that I just, 
You know, that's why I say, I always tell people, I didn't even shoot BTS stills back in the day. I wish I did, you know, like mm -hmm. I just shot pictures of what I was shooting or some little shots here and there, Yeah. but I still have a lot. I still have, you know, a lot of really good things that nobody else has. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, the last Jane's Addiction show in Hawaii when Perry plays naked and nobody else was there. Yeah. One, one photography question I had for you, Chris, uh, that I've always kind of been fascinated about. And I think about a lot of times, like, you know, when you listen to a great musician or a great guitarist, um, you can just hear it and you know who it is. Right. So with, with so many of your photographs, like you just have this style that I can see it and whether or not there's the watermark in the corner, or if it's in a magazine or something like, I just know that it's one of your photos. And I I've always wondered how, you know, even with musicians, how they develop that distinct style and, and how much intent is behind that, behind the decisions that you made or the way that you learned or the way that you practiced, like, how would you say that you developed your style? Was it intentional or was it just yes. kind of, yeah, well, take me into that kind of basically, that, that process. Basically, I discovered Richard Avedon, Irving Penn, and David Bailey, David, who's still alive. Um, I discovered those guys. And if you look at their work and then look at my work, you'll see where I ripped completely off. So if you're going <laughs> to steal, you steal from the best, right? Yeah. If you're a guitar player, you're going to steal from somebody. You steal from Jimmy Page or you steal from Hendrix or you steal from... David Gilmore, you know, whatever you, a Clapton, you know, you, I learned early on, you know, those were my heroes. And I looked at them, especially probably like for the first five years was those three. And then I started discovering more photographers at that time. And then I would, you know, I was subscribed to Vogue magazine and I was subscribing to Playboy at 10. So one of my favorite photographers, Ken Marcus, who shot for Playboy, did all the best centerfolds. He, I took, he was like, such his lighting was flawless perfect and uh i ended up meeting him in 1980 and took a workshop with him and he he's the one that got me to move to la really? and um but like i just looked at everybody and i i that was my influences but then i you know i wasn't really i was looking at rolling stone and this is in the 70s but it wasn't music wasn't my thing i wanted to be a fashion photographer so i was not paying it that much attention to the Henry Diltz's of the world or the Jim Marshall's of the world mm -hmm. who were, you know, legends and fucking, especially Henry Diltz. I'm, be, I'm becoming more appreciative of Henry now than probably ever in my life because, you know, he keeps putting things out. If you guys follow him, he keeps putting pictures out. You're just like, dude, it's what incredible. else do you got? It's yeah. like, <laughs> you know, I was hanging out with Neil Young on the weekend and, you know, from 1975 and you're just like, oh my God, mm -hmm. you know, I never had that kind of, I didn't, well, I shouldn't never, but I didn't get a lot of that kind of access with artists, musicians, like a lot of, like, you know, look at Danny Clinch. He's like best friends with like everybody. Right. Uh, and then, you know, um, I, th I don't know if they're friends with him because of him or because of his hat. It might be because of his hat, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the. But no, Danny's like one of those photographers. I think uh, Charles, well, Charles like grew up with these guys. So right. he had the access. I didn't know, like he was roommates with these guys. A lot of these guys, I think he was roommates with Mark Arm or something like that. Yeah, I did not but, know that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> like, you know, but, um, but I was never that guy to like, I don't kiss people's ass. I don't want to hang out with you and try to be your friend. And, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm too busy working. I'm looking for a job or I want to go shoot this. You know, I was never that guy of just, you know, just not who I am. I got work to do. Um, but I think it, for me, when I look back on this and I just did a photo talk in New Zealand uh, and I, I go back, if you look at my early stuff and there's, I have some pages on, I have a website c called kafaro 50com and it's where I put my high school photos, um, stuff I shot, glamour stuff. I shot girls models when I was a teenager. I, I look at it all. There's there, the connection to it all is just simplicity. Um, and so I've always keep the idea of simple. I'm not a big fan you know, technical person. I can mm -hmm. do technical, but I, it's not my thing. I'd rather, it's more about pulling something out of the subject. You know, the example, like I tell people is like the pictures behind you that you have on your wall there of Chris and mud honey, that's me and a camera and the guys, there's yeah. no lighting, no assistance, no gear, no, Oh yeah. Let's like you set this up. No, it's just me hanging out with the guys and, and being able to seize the moment, take advantage of where we're at, mm -hmm. you know, and doing, getting the best out of it. You yeah. know what I mean? My, that sh shot of mud, honey, I was advised by Bruce. No, Jenny body, the publicist for sub pop 
She says, you're shooting mud, honey. I go, yeah. She goes, buy him a case of beer. So I bought a case of beer and they got yeah. drunk. So, mm -hmm. you know, to me, that's the thing. Like, I'm not a, I'm not like, like today's photographers are just, everything looks soulless to me and it's yeah. just digital. Like music is digital and soulless. Mm -hmm. I, I look at all my, my early stuff. I look at my stuff I'm doing today. Like I yeah. think there's, I, I put soul into my pictures. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the thing that rings, rings true for me with your work. There's just a level of authenticity there um, that isn't manufactured and isn't sterile in that sense. You know, it's just, yeah. you have the ability, like you said, because there's not this elaborate setup or, you know, crazy sort of lighting that you need. Like you just make the shots happen and you know when there's a shot and you take it. Um, and it just, it, it captures those moments that I think a lot of people who, who don't have that ability aren't able to access because they're not ready or it's not their environment or they don't, they don't know when it's happening. And I think like you've, you must've developed such a great kind of internal mechanism that like, you just know when a moment happens. And, and I think like, I was always thinking like when you shoot live, for example, you shoot a live rock show or something, how much of it is proactive versus reactive of what's going on the stage. Yeah, you've yeah. got to put yourself in the situation, in the spot, you know, for when something happens to be able to do it. And I think that's a skill that can be developed and you certainly did. Well, so I've, have you, when's the last time you guys went to shows? Because concert photography is a huge thing right now. Yeah, it's like, big. I went to Jane's Addiction last year at the Palladium. Mm-hmm. Hadn't seen him at the Palladium in 20 years or 30 years. Hadn't seen yeah. the band in 20 years. And there I was watching the first three songs and in the pit was 25 photographers. Yeah, the rail's full. Right? Like ridiculous. Yeah. And my good friend, uh, Fred uh, Sablon, one of my heroes, he's the bass player in Deftones. He was there as his girlfriend. And we're sitting in the balcony and I'm just shaking my head like this, the whole first three songs. And he's like, what is wrong with you? Is your head okay? And I'm like... I go, there's a million fucking photographers. And he goes, yeah. And I go, well, back in my day, I was the only one in there. You yeah. know, <laughs> it was yeah. like, <laughs> I can't imagine being in the pit nowadays. <laughs> like, it's mm -hmm. just, but there's all these photographers now. There's a group I met and I did their podcast down in New Zealand called From the Pit. And they're amazing concert photographers. There's, I met a bunch of concert photographers in Australia this last trip. Amazing. It's a serious game not and it's not about and it ain't about making money that's for sure yeah it's about these photo young photographers loving music wanting to have that access and they enjoy shooting the concerts mm -hmm. whether they get two or three songs or sometimes some get to stay extra or they get hired by the band to go on the tour with them right. like what's his name hurley hurley who's you know rob thomas's and matchbox 20s photographer he hurley's been touring with those guys 10 years and you know they a lot of bands bring their own content creators you right. have to right because they don't have time for that shit no exactly but it's become such a big deal um i think i haven't shot a show in like 15 years and i don't <laughs> ever want to yeah but but it's just insane out there um a lot of photographers are doing it you know a lot of they love that music thing and 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 I mean, like I said, the last show you went to, look at what our next show you go to, look at the pit. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. My friend, he takes photos for a bunch of bands in the Philly area. And we yeah. went and saw uh, Goose and with the Trey Anastasio band. And, and he was on the rail for, you get like two, three songs. And then you, you like, then they take you out. It's just for like the first two, three. And then there was a bunch of people. And then they came back for the first two of like the encore. You know what I mean? They, they have like a limited access to like those first three. Yep. And everybody's everybody's you know trying to get the same angle. You know, I mean, they're right next to each other, taking the same exact picture, basically. And, and that's uh, what drives me crazy. And like I tell people, like that's why I was blessed. Number one, I was the only guy in the in the pit most of the time, or maybe there was maybe two other guys for the first three songs. Yeah, a photographer named O, uh, who passed away recently from San Diego, legendary skateboard skateboard photographer, concert photographer. I used to bump into him at shows all the time in the whiskey and stuff like that. And, um, he was uh, one of the few that I kind of knew. Um, but what I tell all these young photographers, which is hard, like is to, you're getting the same shot. Everybody else is getting, you know, do something else. And yeah, how do you differentiate yourself amongst you that can't. many people? Right. You know, you're all here and, you know, and it, 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 it that's why it, there's this thing with, there's a lot of good concert photography out there. 
but it's just, it's too crisp. It's too sharp. It's too like, again, most di- photography I find soulless. Yeah. Digitals suck the soul out of, you know, analog. Um, yeah, but I, work. my joke to a lot of these young photographers is, uh, I always like to say to them, okay, you're amazing. These are great photos, man. Now let me see you try shooting a show at manual focus at only 1600 ISO and maybe with some film. Let me see you try that yeah. and show me what you <laughs> get. Oh, oh, I would don't know how. Oh, I couldn't do that. Well, that's how I was doing it, bitch. Yeah. yeah. But the way that you did it, you capture the energy of the moment. You know, yeah. Look at so my, much better. Yeah. Look at my Pearl Jam live photos. You know, they're yeah. bouncing around. They're blurry. You feel the energy. the energy. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and look at Charles Peterson. Oh. Yeah, exa- oh, my God. Exactly. I mean, look at like the, the Super Fuzz Big Muff cover, the Mud Honey. Like you can't even tell what's going on in it, but you know the feeling. And that's yes, what great exactly. art is about. Like you can't you can't describe it. But like when you see it, you know, and you get a certain I, I feeling. I used to I'm, I didn't say this to him and I'm sure he won't watch this. OK, so we can say this. <laughs> I used to look at his work, you know, in the, in, when I first discovered him around, you know, 90, I think it was whatever, right. but like he was doing this stuff, his, he, first of all, he's using flash during a show, which I could not comprehend, mm-hmm. but his work, he, I mean, that's the thing, like his new Nirvana book, it doesn't, it captures the feeling of yeah. Nirvana and a Nirvana show. I've seen Nirvana live. I know what the feeling you right. felt like. So he, Mate, you look at those photos and you he captured it. Mm-hmm. He captured what the feeling was like at being at a show, mm-hmm. a tiny little club where people are falling over each other. Yeah. You know, people are going crazy and they're trashing this or whatever. You can smell he, the room too just by yeah, looking at the photos. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. And he he just I say to people all the time, I, I there's a lot of great live photographers out there. Trust me, there's a lot of great ones. But he he really, really nailed it. I mean, he I mean, that's why I think I told you guys the story about when I did my grunge exhibition in Australia back in 20, what, 19. And I was interviewed, you know, press and this and that people, pot, you know, blogs, whatever. And everybody go, oh, you're like a grunge photographer. And everybody, I had to like get them, set them straight. I was like, dude, I am not the grunge photographer. I go, that's Charles Peterson. Charles. I'm the, I'm the guy with visitor. I had a backstage pass, but I didn't, I didn't get to stay for the whole show. You know, like uh, for the whole, you know, grunge years, I was just a visitor, you know, and it, luckily right. they accepted me. It, it took a while, but they accepted me, understood, you know, I had the respect, but I go, it's Charles. And, uh, and, and, um, and I hate when, you know, I'm not going to name names of other photographers from the area that they'll say, oh, they're the, gr-. no, it's Charles Peterson. Mm-hmm. He is the man and his work and his work outside the music thing is yeah. um, brilliant. You know, mm-hmm. he's a brilliant fucking photographer. One of my faves. Going back far. to comparing it to bands, like I was thinking about Mark, Mark Lanigan and his later stuff. And uh, we've talked about it. And like yeah. he, he captured them like every, every time he put an album out, it was like, I feel I, I really respected it when I listened to it. And it took me to whatever he was feeling or trying to make me feel. And that's where you know we talked about it with the fo- the photos and i'm a little worried about the new pearl jam album bringing it back because i i hope that you know it's it's it makes you it's authentic and, they, and it it get, it gets the point across in that way where it's not super produced like if they want to be edgy like what are you going to do in the studio to make it edgy or like you know how how is it going to be produced to kind of portray that and um yeah i just thought mark was i mean he was great at mark- kind of produ- putting stuff out that was very authentic all the time all the time. Mark, I think Mark gave zero fucks about what people thought or felt. Right. Mark, you know, I directed two Screaming Trees videos and I shot them a couple times. And Mark is, was one of a kind, literally one of a kind. I don't think, can't think of anybody else. Just like Lane was one of a kind. Chris yeah. was one of a kind. These guys are, you know, I, you, you know, I, you know, for me, I always tell people like that you can't go, Oh yeah. If you, if you came from another planet and landed and you said, Oh, who else is like Chris Cornell? I'd be like, uh, nobody. You're not going to find else is like Mark Lanigan. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so to me, you know, Lanigan, like, I love what he did with Greg Dooley with the, the gutter twins. Gutter right. Twins, and, yeah. and, you know, Greg, I, they were good friends and, 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 uh, they just created great stuff. They didn't, weren't doing it because, oh, we got to make pay the bills and we're going to tour. And they do it because they love it and the passion. Pearl Jam, my concern about the new record is just, like you say, what what are they going to write about? 
because yeah. they're all millionaires. And you, I'm sorry, you, you're already going to write about the fact that your, your maid showed up late today and the bathroom's not quite as clean as you'd like, or I don't, I've always had that issue with a lot of musicians. You, not that you get fat and lazy, but you get comfortable. You yeah. get, which is not a bad, I would love, I would like to know how that feels. Um, it certainly. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be yeah, quite right. interesting. I would to like to not talk about uh, being poor and, uh, and sad, but that's what I've dealt with. Right <laughs> yeah, <now. laughs> exactly. You write about the areas that you know about at the time, you know, it's yeah, such a, but, it's, yeah, it's, it's such a delicate, uh, thing to do because it's like how like what like you said what do you write about and as you age how do you continue to write about things in a way that still comes off as authentic and you know i always it's always interesting to me uh you know some of those bands that kind of become and i don't mean this pejoratively but like legacy bands right like they've yeah. been around for 50 60 years yeah. and people go to hear the songs yep. that they put out 50 years ago and right. you know when you hear the who like uh play baba o'reilly for example you know teenage wasteland they're all wasted fuck off you know when they're in their late 70s it's just it makes it's just a weird but feeling that's, yeah that world of legacy bands is huge right now oh that's it's like big, there's massive. more money my manager friend manages legacy bands. He's like, I, he goes, I don't make any money with a new artist. He goes, yeah. I make nothing, but mm -hmm. with legacy bands, I make money yeah. because of merchandise and because of the tour, the, you know, what I call the County fair tour, Oh yeah. you know, uh, um, look at any County fair and look at the lineups. It's mm -hmm. insane. You know, they're all bands who were massive in the seventies. Yeah, there's a, there's basically. a show here. There's a show here, I think in May. Um, I think it's in May. I forget what it's called, but it's at, I think it's at Sophie stadium. It's one okay. day or, or no, it's three days, something like that. But it's this R and B type. It's like Chaka Khan can funk. It's like everybody I grew up with in, in under one roof. Wow. And I'm like, you know, they all, each band ha might have one original member, but mm -hmm. they're, you know, it's the music and, you know, and, uh, people want to hear the, that music because it makes them feel good. And like I said, today's music is, is not music. It's content. Yeah. And it, whatever comes out today, doesn't matter by tomorrow. And yeah. uh, it's just the way it is, but that's, I've been shown that I can be wrong with a lot of new artists I've met. Uh, I I'm going to drop some names here, but you guys, yeah. the listeners can check them out. But in Australia, I met a guy that two people there i met first of all, I met the band sticky fingers. Finally, sticky fingers is legendary in Australia. They're right up there with at the top in their, le I met them and shot them. Amazing. Right. But I met this guy, Dante knows who's just fucking brilliant. He's from originally from New York, but he lives in Australia. I met a kid named uh gold Fang who he's from Trinidad plays this dub music. That is for, if you like to smoke weed and listen to this shit, you'll be the happiest guy in the world. He, he's amazing. And then, like I said, in New Zealand, I met I, my hero in New Zealand is besides fat Freddy's drop is this look up this guy, Tiki Tane. He's legendary there. Been around forever. He's been in multiple bands, solo, you name it. He blew. I, I'm obsessed with his music right now. I, it's mm. the only thing I play pretty much. But awesome. there's so many more. You know, there's a lot of good stuff out there. It's just hard to find. Yeah. So what do you yeah. think, like those musicians who kind of get it, what do you think they're able to tap into that the content creators nowadays who just want to be seen, you know, on a, on a phone screen? What, what what's the difference there? Is it the, the intent? Difference is, is it the motive? What do the you difference think? is for them, it's about the music yeah. for the kids. It's about attention. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot of young friends. I won't name names that I shoot for fun who are all want to be pop stars, mm -hmm. you know, because, because they were in theater class or in glee club in high school, they think I can be a pop. Star. I can be Billie Eilish, you know? Yeah. And you're like, no, you can't be Billie Eilish. You don't have a brother who has talent and you don't have a, you know, you don't have any talent, but you can sing anybody, can, you know, it's like, whatever. Right. Um, I think, like I said, the world we live in, it's, it's all content now. And, uh, there's, a, the, I, I've had this discussion, I had this discussion with a bunch of hip hop friends recently about, oh, I got to tell you this funny story, but about hip hop music, how the last few years, I think it's boring and bland and there's no edge and it's all sounds because people are making music without musicians and making music without yeah. instruments. It's all happening on their computers. Yeah. And that's sad. And like I said, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. And if you have right. real talent, you don't need that. You know, same thing as a photographer. Anybody can take a great picture. That's fine. But try doing it over and over and doing something different and unique. Mm -hmm. So it's just the world we live in. It's this world we live in. And, you know, I look back and, you know, it all started going sh for shit in 2000. 
So I like to say that's the beginning of the end. You think but it's, it's like, I for... think a lot of new artists these days are in it for attention, especially, I don't want to be mean, but a lot of the young girl, female artists, not all of them, I'm not generalizing, but a lot of them are there for the attention, whether it's TikTok, you know, Instagram, and it's just a fashion show. There's this one artist that I think she's, she's beautiful and she does some good music, but she spends more time on sexy outfits and and sexuality than she does on her music. And I've said to her, you know, what about the music? Mm -hmm. Oh no, that's there. But like, you could just see, it's not the priority. Yeah. Right. It's desperate for attention. I'm going to get another tattoo and dress this way and do this and, and look at the look. And you're like, sorry, you know, I don't remember, you know, Blondie worried so much about fashion. They worried about the band, you know, she worried Mm -hmm. about what she was the music, you know, and the songwriting and it's just different priorities today. Um, do you ever feel like in your career that you had a moment where you found yourself, like you had to look in the mirror and be like, Chris, like you're going down the wrong, like that you're forgetting what the purpose is because there's a lot of bands that, yeah, maybe they have, it's been a year or two and they all of a sudden they stop and like, what am I doing? And they have to get out of it. Like, is it yeah. possible to kind of come back and be authentic again after you kind of sold out for a year or two? Did you ever experience something like that? Look, look, first of all, I've been trying to sell out for years. I would love yeah, to yeah. sell out. If I had anything to sell, it'd be out the door today. And I'm cheap too. You can get me real cheap. Okay? <laughs> Come on guys. You know, I, I, you know, there's, there's different times in my life. I would say right now I'm kind of, I've been going through a lot in the last year. Um, I just, you know, I just think it, I separate the business and the dreams and I can separate it all and prioritize and organize. I think the problem I've always had for me is just, you know, it's never enough. You mm-hmm. know, I, I have never been satisfied once. I might, you know, I always tell people the last exhibition in New Zealand, oh, my producer killed it. She's the best of the best. She treated me like I was Led Zeppelin playing Lollapalooza, you know, it, and we, we had what, four days of events it was amazing. I, I, the love I felt, but by that was when it was over the next last day, I sat there and go, oh, this sucked. It could have been better. Um, I just, how I'm built, you know, I don't want to settle and I can, and I always tell it, it can always be better. So, but I feel like for my career, you know, I've had the ups and downs and luckily I have photography as I like to jokingly say, photography is my Xanax. It's, it's, you know, it's my, it's, or it's my, it's my, antidepressant. It's my thing that makes me tired or it's, it's the one thing in my life. I always tell people I can, I can't imagine not shooting. You know, I haven't shot that much this year so far. I think I've done three shoots this year, Mm -hmm. but when I get that camera in my hand, I turn into a 12 year old boy and I'm like the happiest guy in the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much like I tell people, like I, I laugh you know, I'm working on a bunch of stuff right now. I'm working on two TV series. I'm working on three exhibitions. I got hopefully coming up this year alone, three exhibitions here in the States. And then I want to do three down in Australia, New Zealand. So, you know, I got, I got lots, you know, I, I, and I have, if I had, you know, you give me $10 million, I do, I do 50 more exhibitions. It's just, that's the thing that holds me back. Um, but I'm do I like surprising people in the next one. Uh, is going to shock a lot of people because like I tell people, and you guys know this about me, but like every, I made my name in the music world. Like everybody knows, not everybody, but a lot of people, everybody has seen at least one of my photos, starting with George Michael right. going from there. Right. But, but what's crazy is I always tell people like, I've done so much more. So now I'm going to start the whole thing. Okay. Let's start showing people the other work my that I've done. So my next exhibition, if all goes as planned, is going to be in May here in LA and it's going to be my Dita Von Teese exhibition because I've been shooting Dita for 20 years. And um, so things like that, I want to show people like, eh, yeah, and I did more than Nirvana or more than George Michael. So that's, that's the joy I get is like going, oh, guys, I like to surprise people. And I, I don't know if I told you that story uh, in, in Sydney, Australia, when I did the first exhibition was George Michael and I got, the press was amazing. It be, that's, gallery became Mecca for George Michael fans for three weeks. I had to go to the gallery every day to meet people. It was wow. one of the best times of my life, the love, the passion for George and everything. And then I went back like eight months later and I did grunge 
And everybody freaked out. They thought, wait a minute, you do George Michael. How do you have these Chris Cornells and this? Yeah, where did these come from? <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck? We just, you know, they everybody puts you in this box. Yeah. Like, this is all you can do. And I'm like, you can put me in the box, but I don't put myself in the box. I don't limit right. myself to anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done everything. Yeah. So it was just fun to do that. And then I followed that with Michael Hutchins and that really blew everybody away. Yeah. Because there's another area. It's like, wait, you did that too. I thought you were the George yeah. Michael and grunge guy. And then now all of a sudden, you know, you've got this going yeah. on too. And, and then, you know, the last exhibition was the, which was the overall greatest hits, you know, people are ice tea. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Ice cube. Yeah. You know, I'm all like, yeah, you know, I, I, my joke, my joke is, is because everybody always says you you're that guy you're you're the guy i'm like that's should be my my business card the guy because mm -hmm. you're the guy that did this you're the guy that did that yeah. like i'm just the guy mm -hmm. yeah, and, and everybody depending on like their own personal interests probably has you in a different box that fits what they're interested in you know when in in, in the grand scheme of things in all reality like there is no box no, for me, there isn't. I, my, that's why my whole career, you know, I had 10 different portfolios. What are you like? What are you looking for? Oh, yeah. we're looking for, you know, stuffed teddy bears on pink seamless. Oh, great. Here's my still life portfolio. <laughs> yeah, here it is. <laughs> you know, we're looking for interiors of a hotel. Here's my interior hotel book, you know, like, because mm -hmm. I've done it all and I yeah. want to, I want to still do it all. And there's things I've done that, you know, that scare me to this day. So yeah. I it's, think that, you know, like you said, you guys, you guys get it musically, you know, you guys are grunge Bible. Like, but you, I know you guys like other music. You don't just listen to Pearl Jam all day, every no, it'd day. It'd be so boring. It wouldn't be fulfilling yeah. and stimulating. And it's probably the same thing for you. I mean, if you were, you know, shooting the same type of music or the same type of talent yeah. or, you know, the same setting, whatever it may be. I mean, it gets boring because you have that, that very, very sincere and authentic relationship with your passion that it's always going to push you to different areas. Like some of my favorite, I love it when you post, you know, you've got these pictures of just different cityscapes and, and architectural scenes. And it's so fascinating to me. Um, and you know, it's stuff like that. It's like, Oh, oh I thought you were the music guy. What are you doing, doing this? But you know, it's the passion that pushes you and, and, and gets you to create in different ways. Well, it's, that's the thing. Like, you know, I was, or learned early on as a kid, I was curious about everything. Curiosity, I, my my favorite quote is curiosity informs my passion. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. And I've that's been my thing. And then when I moved to LA, I met my who I call my big brother. And he screamed at me for for years just about you have to shoot everything. You can't, you have to. And I've done that. Like I've always tell people I've done everything. I've been I've been doing nudes since I was 17. I've been doing uh flowers and scenics and you know fine art type of stuff. I've done just everything. I just, it's like, I, always, that's why my joke is that when I'm dead and gone and the New York Met has the retros Chris Cafaro retrospective mm -hmm. that it's vast. It's like, yeah, you know, they, how do they begin? And, and, it, and then there, you guys will sit there. Like everybody's going to stand around looking at everything going, wow, this fucker had fun when he was here. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go, yeah, he did. You know, mm -hmm. that's the way I've always looked at it. You know, um, and the things I, like I keep saying to everybody, the things I want to do list is getting longer by the day. I still have, I still have that passion to, to still want to create. And my hit list is growing. There's so many artists I would die to shoot. You know, mm -hmm. I really, really want to shoot Billie Eilish. I really want to shoot, you know, um, Lady Gaga. I would die to shoot Beyonce. Like I would love to shoot some of these people and even yeah. some of the more obscure artists I, you know, that's why when friends come to me, I, I think next weekend I'm shooting a bunch of wannabe rappers. So they're like, we need photos, bring it on over. Let's go. You know, like, cause you never know, you know, yeah. yeah. I don't know who these guys are, but if I shoot them and all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're everywhere. I'm like, mm -hmm. right. And it's still Open. fun. It's still fun for you. Yeah. Like shooting to me, I was telling the last probably 20 years if it, I don't call what I do shooting, I, it's not people are like, Oh, what's the photo shoot or a shoot or I call it playtime. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, who wants to play? It's mm -hmm. like, <laughs> it's, like, it's, like the, it's the easiest part of your job. You know? Yeah. Taking pictures is 10% of my life. It's like the rest is the shit that I really got to do. Yeah. But I'm telling you guys, like it's, it's what's fun is it's just that right now, because I'm scanning my archives for me right now, it's just going through my history um, did you see the picture I posted of my sister's machine? I don't think I did. Yeah. I posted my sister's machine and one of the band members reached out to me 
because I asked if I, you know, because I, I have more. I, I, he, I did, you know, I've, I've been finding all these bands that I shot. I, I don't even know if you know, like failure and mm -hmm. right. Like my sister's machine, um, like so many bands, right. LFO and the Pandora's phantom blue. I'm finding all these bands that I'm now I'm scanning those. Right. And what's sad is that, well, the good news is the pictures are still good. Yeah. Thank God the eighties. I wasn't that bad, <laughs> but the weird part is I always do research on the band to mm -hmm. see if they're around and a lot of them aren't. And then I discover a lot of times that like two or three members are dead. Like when I scanned body count, I did one of some of the first shoots of body count. I think there was seven or eight members in the band, like half of the band's dead now. And this band LFO, LFO boy band, three members, two of them are dead. It's weird uh, for me because I feel uh, blessed because I got to meet them and be part of their lives and capture part of their lives. But then it's also sad because I feel like, um, you know, I wasn't thinking back then like this, but I, you just don't know if this is me, the time, you know, like using Kurt Cobain. When I last right. time I saw Kurt, I didn't think I would never see him again, you know? Right. Nowadays, I do, I do, that is in the back of my head. Now, when I shoot a new band, I make sure I'm very grateful and nice and, and make sure that I really enjoy the moment because you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know. Yeah, it's a fragile thing. It's really yeah, weird. When... I'm telling you guys, it's just really weird to document your entire life and then look at it. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, they say, what do they say? Well, when you're dying, your whole life appears before Flashes. you. Yeah. Mine is going to be like a slideshow. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, click, 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 click. <laughs> like, I've seen all this shit. I've seen all this. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Where's the stuff I haven't seen? Yeah. Really? <laughs> it's like, don't hide those, hide those photos, you know? Like, yeah, it's good, the good ones. Nobody can see those. Like my, my best friend, Jason, who kind of is in charge of my estate when I die, I always tell him, I go, there's some boxes, there's some boxes in the vault that never should see the light of day. And he's like, but why? I go, I go, these are photos that nobody can see. He goes, but why? I go, you just don't want to open those boxes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and when I'm dead and gone, somehow I will know if you open them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'll so, be looking over. I'm you. always like, He's just like, don't you'll because you'll be dead. It won't matter. I go, it will matter. Oh yeah. It's going to matter. <laughs> it's going to matter. God. Oh man. That's funny. Yeah. But, I'm thinking about like, you know, I want to play a little bit more guitar, you know, get play more music. And I'm thinking about like when you're young and learning how to play and you're really, you know, figuring out what you like in music and instruments. I mean, the only reason you play is because you love it and you don't have any agenda and like now, even when I want to get into it and start playing again, it's like, what am I going to learn to play? Where am I going to start? And like, and then, or if you want to write like poems, like, you know, I'd like to write more, but I'm like, what am I going to write about? Like, people are going to see this. Like, why do I even think people are going to see or hear anything that I produce? Like that, the, right. that mindset right there is how you block yourself from right. starting and block yourself getting into an authentic space. And you need to be like you were when you were 17 and all right. you got was a snare drum and a broken cymbal. And it's like, no, look, uh, but you're that's exactly, I yell, I yell at young photographers and old photographers and musicians. You have to ask, why did you get in? Why did you start to begin with? Why did you pick up a camera? Why did you pick up a guitar? Cause yeah. it was fun. Mm -hmm. Don't lose that. And I mm -hmm. haven't lost right. that. Yeah. And if the answer isn't because it was fun, then that's not a good start. Yeah. You've like I, I picked else. up a camera because it was fun and I, and I wanted to meet Audrey Hepburn. So I didn't meet her, <laughs> but I'm still having fun, you know, right. and, it's a pretty and, good deal at the end of the day. Yeah, but it's like I'm, you know, I always tell people when it when it stops being fun, which it never will, it's just, you know, I just can't imagine. And that's the same thing. I've, you know, been blessed to shot a lot of great musicians, right? The great guitar players that I would have conversations with about how they used to, I'm 12 years old and I locked myself in my bedroom and listened to Led Zeppelin and just tried to duplicate and over and over, you know, and and I love those stories because you're just sitting there going, like, I'm not alone. I was just doing it with a camera though, you know, mm -hmm. and that passion for what you do never, you know, you don't have to be a guitar player or get good at guitar. So you can have an album and tour in a band. You can do it because you love it. It brings creativity. It fills your soul. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe you do end up playing in a cover band on the weekends and have that, right. that joy. Why not? Like, yeah. why wouldn't you? And right. nowadays cover bands are a huge. Oh yeah. Have you, seen, have you seen all these cover bands on YouTube? Yeah. They're massive. 
There's like two or three of them from Australia alone that are insanely good. Yeah. Yeah. There's one, I think they're called mixed up everything. And like, they're a bunch of kids like younger than us. I I know who they are. I tried shooting them when I was in Australia last. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I reached out to them and they weren't there. I think they're in Europe still or something. Yeah. They were recording an album in some, somewhere in Europe. Yeah. Uh, recently. So I, I they're, know they've been they're, I, I've always followed them. I like the, they're young. I mean, look at them when they started, they were like babies. Yeah. They were, they were like 10. Yeah. And they're very talented and very passionate and mm-hmm. their covers they do are always good. Yeah. You know, and it's, they were smart though. Doing those covers brought them an audience. Yeah. And it gave them the ability to make original stuff and have yeah. people hear it. Yeah, and I've to- that's why I've told a lot of my young friends, do covers, get people yeah. to, we don't want to hear oh, your music. Yeah. We don't people want to hear a hear song them, that yeah. you write about, you know, one more song about how sad the world is and nobody loves me and nobody cares. <laughs> I got problems and I got my feelings. It's like, shut up. Where's the rock anthem? Where's the songs of, you know, let's get drunk and fuck, you know, like what happened? Like what I always tell people, gotta play the hits. metal music, man, the what killed metal, the fun in rock and roll was grunge. They sucked the fun out of rock and roll. You know, it used to be sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Then it became, you know, coffee, uh, angst, and, you know, fucking heroin. Heroin, yeah. And it was like, God, you guys sucked the fun out of it. You know, yeah, we, like, we missed the good old days of being at the whiskey and, and rock bands and, yeah, and, you know, getting drunk and, and trying to pull chicks and oh, the good old days. The simple stuff. The simple yeah. stuff. Now I'm too tired. I got episodes. asked to go. I got asked to go to a show recently at the Mint, a, a band that I shot, and they go on at nine thirty. I'm like, dude, I, I'm in bed at nine. It's too late. I can't go to shows anymore because it's past my bedtime. <laughs> it's so bad. That's why I was telling uh, who. I think Jamie Lee Curtis did it uh, on an Instagram post, and she was 100 percent correct. She said all these, you know these bands these days, especially the older legacy bands, they need to do matinee shows because oh, yeah. their audience is in bed by nine. You yeah. cannot start the show at eight. It's not mm-hmm. going to, you're not going to get, but if you start a show at 1 PM, you yeah. can, I'll be there, you know? Oh yeah. And you'll be but, home. You'll be home then, in time for dinner and you'll get, exactly, you'll get a shower and go to sleep. You know, exactly. You know, yeah. I can just, write a review right after because I'm awake still. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But like, the, I have friends like I did going to shows like Chris, come to a show 10 o'clock. We're playing. Really? No, I'm not going to go at 10 o'clock. I've done enough of that. Yeah. I just was telling a, um, a friend of mine that I met in New Zealand. She's a big Chris Cornell Soundgarden fan. Big. And I just told her like, you know, that's why I don't go shows at the Whiskey anymore. Because I saw Soundgarden at the Whiskey in 89, you know, louder than live. I was there for two shows. I go, I'm not going to sit there and, you know, go see some cheese ball band at the whiskey and ruin that memory. No, <laughs> especially no. at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I know. Come on guys. It's like ridiculous, but I, I get it. Like, it, and I, they yell at me about being old and I admit it. I'm not a kid anymore. You know, I'm not, I, I, I my mind thinks I, I, I always tell you, my mind says 30, my body says 90. So it's kind of a fuck up somewhere right in, in the, the middle. middle. You end up right 60. where you're supposed to be. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. But yeah, yeah you, you guys get it. Like, but like, I, I just want to ask you guys one question and that's basically, you know, you've guys come a long way with this. How many years has this been grunge Bible? It's been eight years. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Eight years. It's that's almost, in te- almost a decade. Yeah. That is insane. Well, you guys got to do some sort of event or some sort of like, you know, what do you call it? Like, what you, like those conventions or something, you know, get everybody to show up or something. Yeah, we've talked about doing something, getting the bands together and getting on stage for like something small. You got to do some sort of event somewhere. And I'm, you know, I'm going to help you guys. So it's like, but like, we got to, you got to do something like, we can tie it in with an exhibition. Maybe we, because I want to do, I'm trying to, I want to do an exhibition. I've talked to a few guys about this. Uh, I talked to Charles about it a little bit. Lance, Paul, uh, Jarenzek, he is well, but like, I would love to see somebody do like the grunge exhibition with all the photographers, Karen Mason, myself, everybody, uh, the best to everybody, some massive type of event. That's something if you guys could be, pull that together and find a wild, yeah. find a gallery or a museum somewhere, it would be huge. Yeah. It would be huge. You know what I'm saying? If you got the best of photographers, Michael Levine, you know, he did, you know, the names go on, you know, the great photographers with the great photos. 
I keep saying everyone, I would love to curate that, but it's like, you just, you just, I don't know how to, where to go with that. You know, Charles, you know, I said, I, some photographers would be too insecure to do it, but I think a lot of guys would do it. Totally. I love the idea. I love yeah. stuff like that. I love events and, and all that. And yeah, um, it would be really fun. We just had a couple of weeks ago, I was going to say we had uh, Scott Crane on. He's a, a producer from the time and he lived in Bainbridge Island with um, Jack and Dino and Chad Wood Channing Brothers. And, and the Wood yep. Brothers. And, and, we did a, and we did a whole episode talking about that. And, uh, and they were like on it, they were literally on an island learning how to play music without like any outside. And that's, yep. you know, a lot of where the authentic, authenticity came from the sound, the Seattle sound. And, uh, and yeah, he, he loved talking about it, obviously. And it would be, it would be cool to, to, well, I met, everybody I know somebody like who's that. working on a documentary right now. Um, she came by a month ago and is doing some sort of documentary. And it sounded like, like, sound like a great idea where she's coming from. I'm not going to say too much because she's, it's her, th her project, but yeah. I know people, you know, people have done a lot of documentaries about things and uh, I just told her like, you know, just be honest with it and no bullshit and you'll be fine. You know, and cause yeah. people want to know the stories. I mean, I get yelled at it all the time, you know, uh, even last night and I was in the group and they were, my friend Sonny said to me, God, Chris, I love your stories. I go, well, I got a lot of them, you know, and that's <laughs> why like, you know, I I've got, my app, why I created my app and my websites is like, there's a, I got so many stories and I still got a, a lot more. I've done a lot. I think we have over 200 and some odd videos on my website, but I got even more, you know, even more. And people, I find that in today's world that people want to hear the stories. Do yeah. you know what I mean? They, they, they like the photos, but they want to know a little something about that, mm -hmm. the story behind it. Cause then it makes it personalize it to them. And then when they buy the photo or the print and they frame it, it's up on their wall. They're like, oh, I know a little bit about the history behind this. As opposed mm -hmm. to, I just have a photo of Chris Cornell. I don't know anything about it. Right. You know what I yeah, mean? Exactly. And, and I think as it relates to like what Ethan and I do, that's kind of why it's fun for us. And what we like to do is, you know, have conversations with people that can tell their stories um, and can share the feelings that they, that they felt at the time and the experiences that they had, and then kind of use the following that exists to, to, to give them the opportunity to tell it to more people. Um, and it's, and it's, it's so interesting for me too. Anytime we have those types of conversation and it's really illuminating. As we talk about this, literally right this second, uh, this guy on Instagram, What's his the thing is Mag Seven. He's a grunge guy. Mag Seven. Do you know him? Sounds sounds grungy. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. He just writes right now. You posted the backstory of your sh shoot with uh, Allison Chains in L.A. May I repost that story along with an image? I love your stories, and I know other fans do as well. Also, if it's okay with you, I would like to post your link so that that people may buy your images. I want to always support you and your work. That's love the it. people I like to help. Yeah. I like, to, you know, awesome. guys, I like being asked when people post my shit. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and yeah. most people don't ask, as we know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But they I like when they do. For I, and they don't understand, but I do it. I mainly do it because then I build relationships. Right. Yeah. And then everybody's more supportive that way. You know, yeah. I was telling people, like, first the impression. George Michael community, I got, they got my back. Mm -hmm. You don't, don't fuck with my George Michael <laughs> images because they, the, a bunch of crazy old ladies will come after you. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. not a fight that i would win so i gotta stay away from <laughs> exactly. yeah, they have way more on the sidelines and, way yeah. more experience than i do in those realms yeah but i'm just saying like it's like you know I, that's why i said that you should see this tv series i've been shooting we've been shooting it what 13 years now and we have 12 episodes mapped out it's like 80 percent of it is shot like we're just and um we're editing right now in the middle of editing uh one of the ep full episodes we because the trailer I'll send you guys the trailer, but the trailer is good. Gives you an idea, but I decided I want to do a whole episode so you can get a full grasp. Of, but it's about like, not, it's not like about me. It's mm -hmm. about these, this, my work. It's about the making of the work, the stories behind the work, the story behind making the exhibition, the story, like there's this, this journey I've been on my whole life and, and, and uh, I've been documenting it, you know? So unlike I always, like I say, I, I can tell you a story and I can show you the pictures to back it up or vice versa. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, that's when I get, I start to feel grateful and I start to feel proud of myself. I've worked mm -hmm. my ass off nonstop. Yeah. Like I have no life. I work. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, um, 
as we're coming up on on quitting time here it's yep. it's really interesting um i would say and ethan i think i can speak for you like chris you are one of the most consistently inspiring and supportive and just incredible people that we've been able to meet through this thing um and like your ability and choice to always pay it forward to other people even people uh who may not deserve it uh and <laughs> you know yeah it's just it's it's unbelievable and it's just it's so inspiring and i think ethan i you'd probably agree with me too like if there's one person uh, you know, who's responsible for us continuing to do this silly little thing. It's you. And, uh, well, every, thank you guys. But I, like I said, I think, like I said, I'm, I'm for anybody who's passionate about what they want to do. I'm, I'm a supporter. Like I, I say this all the time. I have lived my dream a hundred times over. Like mm -hmm. if you'd met me at 10, I, I just want to take pictures of girls, you know, and I just want to take pictures, you know, for the rest of my life. And, you know, that, I've lived it. I've done more than, like I said, my stats are incredible, you know, over 200 album packages, you know, over, you know, 500 magazines, <laughs> you know, like, it's just like, go on and on and on. Right. And, you know, Chris Cornell wrote a song about one of my photos, which yeah. is it right at the top. Yeah. I'll say, <laughs> you know, so that's yeah. when I, I, that's when I shut photographers down. Did Chris write a song about your photo? <laughs> the answer is no moves. Step aside. <laughs> Go away. Um, but I, but the, to me, it's like, that's why I love helping other people live their dreams. It's just, it brings me the joy because I wouldn't be here today if I didn't get the help. And I still get help every day. So to me, you know, that's what I'm saying to you guys. We'll talk about it in the future, in the weeks. But we can turn around and we'll do grunge you know, down in Austin, Texas, it could be sponsored by Grunge Bible. There's a million ideas. We could go out and make shit happen. We can take it on the road. I don't know. Like there's a million, I got a million ideas. I get yelled at all the time. I got a million ideas, but it's like, and like I said, I don't, I don't, I'd, I'd like to make money. I'd like to be able to pay my bills, but that's not my motivation. Right. Yeah. I, I get so much. I just had somebody over here literally uh, three weeks ago who came in and, uh, and, and uh, meet a friend of mine from Australia, not a friend, but a guy I know from Australia is he's a producer and he just, you know, he's friends with a bunch of my friends. He runs a studio down there and he just came over and we were talking about all this stuff and he just loves fucking Nirvana. So I gave him a little 13 by 19 print to take home with himself. And he just was in the joy I got out of that. You know, it makes me proud. It's like, great. I made somebody smile today. I win. Yeah. And I would say to you to guys, live. I think you guys make a lot of people smile and you guys like, you know, definitely your grunge fans. The only problem I have with you guys, honestly, is, you know, and you have more followers than me. And I think those it's people need up. to follow. They need to follow so me. Uh, mm -hmm. And they need to download my app and I need yes. good reviews. People aren't giving me, I keep yelling at everybody. Can you write a good review, please? Write a good That's review. the thing. Nobody wants to review anything. Like we fucking beg people on this podcast. Like, please yeah. tell us what you think. Even if you hate us, like at least tell us, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. And like, nobody wants to do it. Yeah, <laughs> nobody exactly. wants to. Nobody has the time. I keep right. saying to my friends, they're like, when I first dropped the app, they're all like, download. It's amazing. Like, Could you write a review? No, I don't have time. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. You have time to do fucking everything else, but you I know, but yeah. <laughs> but then when you want my free photo shoot, I, you know, then I do it. Right. Exactly. You know? yeah. But no, I just think it's important that like I tell people all the time, we all stick together. This, this yeah. world, this life is fucking stupid. And we just, if we stick together, we can help each other put up with this crazy shit. Right. On. Well, we'll be in LA in September and we'll definitely hang out. Yeah, and maybe we'll have sure. some fun. You can shoot us. <laughs> yeah. I'll make you. Guys, I'll make you guys stars. Yeah, yeah make so us then, look good. <laughs> at the end of the day, at least I have we'll this have rule. It. I have this rule that pisses a lot of people off, but I always tell people that you're nobody until I shoot you. <laughs> and, That's what I'm saying. We need to become they, somebody, Ethan. And so, like people, like you know, you know, hey Chris, do you like Beyonce? Who like Beyonce? <laughs> Who? Like she's nobody. They're like, what do you mean? I, I didn't shoot her, so she's right. nobody. Yep. And they're like, drives people crazy. Cause I'm always like, you know, you know, Freddie Mercury, who he never shot him. So he's nobody <laughs> so how it works. And you're nobody until I take your picture. Well, we can fix that. Yeah. Then you go on to fame and somebody. fortune and forget me. <laughs> never. No, that's Absolutely. what the, everybody always says that. Oh, I would never forget you. Trust me. I go, you want to trust me. Nah. I, I always think about myself that I, I always think about like, 
I, I talk about this a lot with my f- close friends about like when I'm gone, you know, like, because you see what, how people die and you see how the internet reacts. So it's not like, cause, cause I always think of myself, like I, my best friend, Jason, he, he has strict instructions and stuff. Like I go, if anybody says anything nice about me and they, and, 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 and that, and, and and you ask them if they didn't, t- did you tell Chris that, you you know, you appreciated him? Like, if they say no, you punch him in the face. Like, I just don't, it's like you tell people while they're alive that you appreciate them, you know? Yeah. You don't tell them when they're dead. Well, echoing what Chris said, we do really appreciate yeah. you. And I, but and I, I appreciate you guys. Right. Like, like, we've, like I said, we've I known know. each other a long time. Yeah. I know. Well, that's the crazy part. It's been a long time. Um, you are our first interview, if, that, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. right? Maybe, <laughs> other, maybe Drew or something, but like, and now and you the, and now to the do last. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Have you exactly. guys gone after Charles, though? No, we, we, we want to, um, his, uh, the Nirvana books coming out, I think, should, I think it's coming out in a couple of days, but, uh, it's, yeah. I'd love to Look, chat with I'll, him about I can that. send you his email address, but you got to get him. You got to yeah. get Charles. That he's would be the, a cool he's conversation. A, he's, he's the best. Charles, Let's do it. Lance was great. I, I had fun talking to Lance. Michael, of course, I, I he's, I mean, he, Michael's one of my favorite photographers. I don't like to tell him that, but he's, Michael did amazing shit back in the, mainly in the hip hop space, more than the grunge space. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Tell him before he dies. Yeah, yeah, Michael, like Michael's one of those guys that, you know, now he's into filmmaking animation. He's doing amazing shit, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you gotta get, you gotta get Charles on. You just have to. Okay. We can do that. Yes, we can. He's just, he's just amazing. And, and like I said, uh, his stories are like really probably some better, of the best. Like I told him too, yours? like he should write a book, you know, the pictures are great and everything, but the stories are better. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Thank, thank you, Chris. Chris. It was a pleasure. That was very fun. Um, I'm sure we'll have you back on at some point and maybe uh, yeah, the this next summer, Pearl Jam spring, record. This fall. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. We're going to check in for an update when it comes out. We'll actually yeah, get your doesn't update matter reaction. By Pearl Jam. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Awesome. Thank Fuck you, guys. Yeah. It just makes me laugh, though. I swear to God, don't you add this to the clip? But yeah, we're cut now. Who cares? <laughs> who cares about like Pearl Jam? Like I, I don't even. Want, the fans are going to think it's the greatest thing ever, and uh, and, but like, give me a fucking break. And Eddie there's, sounds. There's worse a lot of ever. mental gymnastics, I think, going on that like people uh, confuse their gratitude for the fact that like the none of the people in the band are dead, and the fact that they're still making music. They confuse that with the fact that like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome. Like yeah. the music is good and like i don't know like i think you got to separate the two but like i don't like i don't listen to much grunge ever really anymore like it's just yeah. not doesn't do it for me anymore but if you're like gonna you listen said, to you pearl jam albums you're gonna listen to pearl jam album you're gonna put on 10 you put 10 on exactly like and it's it, been it'd be, down it'd be bad not to like why would you not why would you not turn to that stuff i have this this girl in new zealand i met she's a big pearl jam fan she sent me a message a couple nights ago they're playing in new zealand i can't believe she's like dying like yeah she cannot believe it and mm-hmm. i'm all like you know i go you do know eddie vetter likes to kill puppies and kittens <laughs> how does that make you feel <laughs> yeah she's like what and i'm like oh because like in the old days we used to always to fuck with girls they eddie vetter's amazing I, you know he's gay right <laughs> <laughs> they would just be the like word no, on the street don't yeah. say that crushing the dreams oh always i'm everywhere. always pissing. So I, I told her, like, I go, you do know Pearl Jam hates New Zealand. And she's like, no, that can't be true. It's impossible. Yeah, I've been talking shit for two days now, just giving her shit after shit. Like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's tough because, like, yeah, Pearl Jam's coming and we're like, we should go. But I there's, like, a lot of other people I'd rather spend my money to go see right now. Yeah. And, like, all the time needed. And, and I, uh, I want to know how much tickets for them. I mean, they, you know. They, it's expensive. Fuck. Like, through the 10 Club um for the a lot of the u.s dates um it's a flat like all the tickets cost the same evidently and like it's a lottery as i'm sure you yeah they're 175 bucks a piece Shit. and it's wild to me because like the, they're they're fucking running everything through Ticketmaster, which they fucking fought tooth and nail and declared war know. on 30 years ago and you know i they don't that's the that's the thing that bothers me about a lot of things these days. I yeah. appreciate the punk rock ethic or the right. like let's stand up to the big corporate world. But you mm-hmm. know what? Everybody sells out. Everybody does. Everybody does. And yeah. if you don't, you're an idiot. Like yeah. back in nineteen ninety one when all the don't sell out, don't sell out. All those people that said don't sell out work at Starbucks now and getting yeah. me my coffee. 
Exactly. And the thing is, like, every, it's so easy for, like, somebody who's not in that position to be like, oh, why the fuck don't they make tickets $20? But, like, if I had the opportunity to sell my product for 200 a head or 20 a head, right. why the fuck, like, if I'm going to sell it out anyways, I'm going to sell yeah. it out for fucking 200 and just fuck off for the next three years off of that yeah. money. It's I would like, want to do that. I would do that in like, a heartbeat. It sounds look, great. It's, we're in America, and the god of America is money. Yeah. You know, money is everything. It is the root of all evil. And and that root is fertilized in bullshit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people relax. Those days of, you know, oh, righteous and power. Like, eh, the 60s are long gone. It all know, sounds that, good on paper until you got to try like, to live. I, give me the money. I'll fucking sell it. Like, just so you guys know, like, what I'm trying to do right now, my goal is in two years is to sell my entire catalog off. Yeah. My like numbers. in a similar way that like, I know a lot of musicians are doing right, that. Like exactly. Selling, yeah, it, exactly. I'd like 10 to $20 million. Mm -hmm. I'm out of here. I go buy a house on the beach Hell in, yeah. in Australia. Cause I don't have anybody to leave it to. I want right. the money, you know, I want to yeah. live the rest of my life on a beach and, mm -hmm. and be cool, yeah. you know, and I'll still shoot on the side. I'll still shoot pussy. Cause that's what right. I do. Yeah. It's fun. But you know, but like, I, uh, I'm not like, I don't know. I just sit there and tell people all the time, like relax. And the thing is, you know, Pearl Jam, I just have ill feelings for them because of what they did to Dave Aberziz, mm -hmm. what they did to me, what they did to Julie Farman, what they did to a lot of people. And yeah. I just started talking to Julie Farman, their publicist from back in the day. We just started talking last year, sending messages and stuff like that. I loved her. To, she, I, she hired me for so many jobs, Pearl Jam, one of them. But she, she knows how the bullshit that they are, the, yeah. the hypocrisy. Oh, I didn't tell you guys this story. So what, two years ago, I, I reached out to Sony Music to see if I can get, maybe three years ago, I wanted to get the film, the actual film reels of my Pearl Jam Jeremy video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to remaster them into 4K. So I'd have mm -hmm. to transfer the film to digital 4K. So I can make a 4K version because right now it's just standard def and it looks like shit. Sure. So I reach out to Sony. We found the film, Chris. Praise Great. Back, but I didn't even think they could find it. That they should be that should have been the hard part, right? Yeah. Like so the guy says to me, "You got to get permission from the the management and the band." So I email Kelly Curtis. He says, "Oh, I'll transfer it over to this guy. You got to talk to this guy." This guy then says to me, "I got to reach out to the band and get permission from them." week goes by i get an email sorry chris they don't approve wow. i'm like fuck you like yeah, fuck you and the horse shitty. you rode that's, in on and that's where like, that's where it ends like they don't approve like that's but it. it's like i'm not asking for money right. i'm not asking for i'm paying for the whole train i'm doing everything and you get a 4k version of this fucking right legendary fucking video and that's and you guys are stand up for the artist. Because that was that was the bullshit. first music video they ever did, right? Was that the first? No, one? it was not. Mine was never used. Officially. Yeah, I know, but like that was the first one that they had shot as a band, right? Like, the, like they hadn't done anything for any anything else on. Well, 10 they by did that the live point, right? ones. They did even flow yeah. and alive, right? So this right. was the first. Right. Exactly. But just so you to not there'd be to, value in that. But like, just for history's sake. Yeah. for quality's sake right you're just sitting there just going and i i hope someday i run into one of those fuckers that it's like go f just fuck you 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 know you're yeah. all billionaires now y'all got money you can all yeah. fucking jeff i met you can do skateboard parks but fuck you you, you and your hypocrisy yeah yeah you live in they your little become bubble. A corporation and not a band yeah, and you like, you know, you talk about the artists and the art, nee, 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 and then you're saying you're saying no to me. Right. Yeah, you know, you forget as, as that much I spent mine all, as it is yours. I spent all my money and sold my collections to pay for that thing. I, you know, I gave Eddie Vedder guitars. Let's forget not forget about all that I did for you. Normally I right. don't normally keep score, yeah. but in this case, yeah. it's like fuck you all, you know, fuck all of you. You, that's what I don't like about them. They, they've got this image, you know, even this girl said to me, you know, but I love how they stand up for fucking, you know, abortion rights. I go, yeah, because they probably fucking paid girls to have them. It's like, so, you know, fuck, like, fuck yeah. them. Fuck, they're, they're not what you think they are, yeah. you know? And Eddie I think there's Van, an element too, like you never meet your heroes and yeah. a lot of people, they've, they become such like big things. And I, and that's the thing, like, I was nobody, like, nobody's that, you know, like, no. Eddie Vedder is a, a, to me is a hypocrite and a and a and a, and a um, he's just full of shit. I knew how he, the game he was playing. He, he he's the goose that laid the golden egg and he's controlled those fucks since day one. 
you yeah. know, he, he's, they know without them, without him, they're nothing. Right. Yeah. So he can do whatever he wants. And they're going right. to just say, yes, Eddie, because they're all kissing his ass yeah. and he's, they make money. Like, yeah. And it's like, I, and you know, like when they fired Dave, you know, it was his idea to fire Dave, not right. And everybody else bands. is going to fall into line. Yeah. And it's like, you sit there and you just kind of just go, you know, fuck you. All I wanted to do is, try, you know, make it 4k for my, the history of my career and my life. Right. You can't say yes to that. And, and then I'm not even, you know, I can say, honestly, I'm not even hundred percent sure that the guy even asked the band. You know? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like you, you just, you, there's such a big corporation at this point. It's like, you don't even know that people made any decisions or there's like, yeah. fuck off. And it's like, you know, and these days I get really annoyed when people like are doing shit like, and I'm sitting there just going, do you guys got, do you guys have more than $500 in a savings account? I don't, I have $200 yeah. to my name. I'm poor. I owe my best friend a million dollars. So fuck off. Like don't, it just makes me angry. Like it's like this bullshit, like fuck the, phot all photographers get treated like shit. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's ridiculous about how, you know, oh, you, you know, if, if nobody was there to take a picture, it, it's like you, you got nothing. Yeah. There wouldn't be anything. And it's like, yeah, but yet we get treated by, sh like, you should see this all through my career, like all the bullshit. Oh, Chris, can we get this photo for $200? What? Mm. So you can sell t-shirts and make millions, 50,000. And yeah, I get seriously. Yep. It's just, it's, it's annoying. It's stupid. And it's just pisses me off mm -hmm. as you can see. But like, I just really want to, I just want to transfer that video into 4k. Cause it would be beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. That would be really special. Cause it was shot on 35 millimeter film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, this is as much mine as it is yours. Like we did yeah, this I, project like, together. See, this, like, if I didn't need the money back in 1991, I would, I would have not sold it to the label. I would have just kept it for myself. And yeah, that's what yeah. makes me mad. I, Cause I was so poor, which I always am. But it's like, you're just sitting there just kind of going. <laughs> if I knew it wouldn't have made a difference, I would have kept it. <laughs> yeah, I would have sat on that film and told him to fuck off. But like, that's the thing. Like, you know, I tell people like, I, there's a million shitty stories like that with these people. But at Pearl Jam, I just have always found to be just filled with hypocrisy and bullshit. Yeah, the pompous. You know? And Dave Aberzee has backed it up with me back in the day. Before he was... Or was it after he was, no, it was when he started that green, I shot his band Greenhouse Orchestra, whatever it was called. Oh, okay. We got to get Dave on next. Got to get that, a Brzee song That'd here. be interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Dave, Dave's good. You know, he's in Bali. Is he? Yeah. He, he, I sent him a Pearl Jam catalog back a couple years ago and he fucking loved it. He sends me a message every now and then or makes a comment. Yeah. But. You know, he's living in, he's living the good life in Bali, which I don't blame him. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. The good that. news. I'm sure like, you know, he, I'm sure he makes a good chunk of money every year off of what he did do for. Oh him. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I bet. I think, was he on like one or two albums? Yeah. I think he was on, I think versus and Vitalogy and then he got yeah. fired like right after they finished Vitalogy. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and I don't know, it's just weird. I always tell people like, it's and it's looking back on all the story of, you know, out of all these bands that we were blowing up in the '90s, and that Eddie Vedder is the one standing, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and and Chris is gone. All these guys are it's gone. Like how it worked out that way? Yeah, like did Eddie sell his soul to the devil? You know, is this Damn Yankees? Do you ever see yeah. that movie, Damn Yankees? Yeah, it's like what? How did this happen? Like, yeah, shit. like of all the guys, of yeah. all the guys. You know, that Eddie's the one standing, you know, and Mark Arm. Oh, let's give credit to Mark. Yeah. Arm. Mark fucking Arm. Yeah. And he, you know, uh, I can see why Mark is because he's a nice guy. Yeah. But <laughs> Eddie's like just one. like, and I think about, you know, when I hear, I see stories or I hear things when Pearl Jam talks about things and I go, I, I was there at some of this stuff and I, so this you know, didn't happen that way. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was I there when Ed, Eddie, Eddie met Mark Arm. I was there. Yeah, you know, I always wonder what like would Beth be so would annoying. have to say. I haven't talked to her in a hundred years. Right. But, yeah, that's a good question. Because they were so, you know, into each other. They got married, right? And then they divorced shortly. Yeah, they were married for like I think like eight or nine years or something like that. Where they, yeah. I don't even know what she's doing, but I'm sure she gets a yeah. good chunk of alimony. Yeah. I don't even know Probably. where she is. Cause she was was she she was a bass guitarist in was it Hovercraft? Hovercraft? Yeah. Yeah. I got lots of pictures of them. Mm -hmm. I shot them a bunch for her. 
Um, yeah. You know, and I flew her to, I paid money and spent my, my money and flew her from Seattle to LA so that she could see Pearl Jam play on the same stage as Fugazi at a Rock for Choice show. I paid for it because they had no money. Yeah. And then I paid for her to go to Hawaii to see the last Jane's Addiction show. Because I'm a nice guy. Paying it forward. But you new, know Jane's Addiction or Porno for Pyros is coming back for a little bit? They are touring right now. Yeah. yeah. I think well, they're doing like one more album and yeah. the final I, which tour. I, I was still saying I didn't care the day they started and I don't care now. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, they are do, I, they I are doing a Jane's Addiction record right now. Um, I, Eric was over here a couple months ago, and um, they and and they're doing a Jane's Addiction record, and I think Dave is playing on it, and I know that that working on that. Yeah. Um, you know Stephen Perkins, who I love to death, he, he's never stops working. Like you, yeah. So exactly, <laughs> just yeah. like Chris. Well, Chris, so the plan is uh, we're going to release this tomorrow. Uh, okay. If you're cool with that. Um, yeah, so of course. We'll, we'll, always, we'll, you know that. We'll send it over to you. Um, but yeah, this, this, it's always, it's always fun chatting with you and um, like anything. Like if you ever need, like if you ever need just to fill guests, things like that, give me a call. Cause I can, you know me, I can rant about anything. Yeah. yeah. No, this oh, is yeah. perfect. We were, we, we were going to call you uh, soon anyway. So yeah. this, this worked out really good because we needed somebody um, right now. Cause me and Chris, yeah, we need the help. We've been we've been uh, slugging away some uh, me and him episodes. We needed a guest again. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be in touch, and then like I said, we'll definitely be there in September together. That's like our plan. We're we have a, don't have anything nailed down, but we want to do some uh, fun stuff. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, you out yeah. There. When when we get closer to it, we'll we'll schedule some shit and and, and go out and have some fun. See see what's going on in town here. Yeah, I have cool. uh, yeah. I have my group uh, from Facebook group. They're coming into town next month for like five days. We're doing photo shoots. They're all a bunch of photographers. So I have to entertain awesome. and be, be the guy. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm down. So whatever you guys need, you let me know. Hell yeah. Go you turn 30, guys. only third, only turn 31. So I want to do something I'll remember forever, oh, you know? Wow. 31. And I, want, and I want the, I want the pictures and the story to, uh, the story to prove These, it or this, story in the pictures. This film is to prove older it. than you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably like ten this years old. This was shot in nineteen ninety two. Oh okay, shit! Geez. Kids today. Kids today, man, they're terrible. I swear <laughs> to God, <laughs> absolutely awful. Go have awesome. fun, guys. Have a great weekend. Yeah, Do thank you. you. Hope, hope you have a good one too, Chris. And and thanks again. And like, if there's ever anything that we can yeah. help, well, help we gotta, you with we gotta somehow, do, just try to get your people to fucking download my app and we're going to lead into this episode like once you leave like we're going to do like okay. the intro and we'll we'll, yeah, we'll, like we'll, we'll yell fucking, at them and tell them to yeah, stop fucking Bob around is, he's crazy like help the old guy out something absolutely like that. feel sorry for him he's senile he doesn't know anything <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, and then just be like so and what you're about Ill. to see <laughs> we'll just what you're about them. to watch he'll he will deny tomorrow <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we'll just guilt him into doing it it'll be perfect yeah definitely Thank you, guys. Thank you, yep. Chris, as always. Thank you, guys. Have a good See one. Ya. Right yep. on. There you have it. Chris Cavara, man. He delivers every time. Dude, I love I love talking to him. So that's much a, fun. That's a special man right there. Yeah, he is the energy. He brings the energy all the time. You know, you just you just throw him a softball and let him go, you know? Mm -hmm. Hits it it's so park, funny so. to me with Chris. Um, he paints himself as this, like, bitter, curmudgeonly old man. Um, but he really is one of the sweetest and kindest and most generous yeah. people um, that we've met in in this sphere of our lives. And and yeah. it's not even close. He's on the short list. Um, and he was the first person that we ever spoke to um, that was kind of outside of you and me as it relates to yeah. grunge and as it relates to the music and, and, and the world. And this is the, the, at the crux of what being authentic is, Yeah, right? It's Chris. We talk, we've, we've talked about it a ton. It's like when you get big, you've done all these cool things. But then if somebody says, you know, something, asks something genuinely, like, can I use your photo? And that means the world to him, right? Mm -hmm. Something small that has to do with him as a person and his interests. And he can take that and he just is like, okay, like these guys are, I, I, I sense that they, they're intrigued and I'm going to match it. And that's what he's done for us for ever since we met him. Mm -hmm. And he does that with new artists, new people. And like, he just gets excited for, all the small stuff and yeah. man i love people like that me too man great conversation 
Um, so thank you again all for listening. Um, this is the time of the show where we need some reviews. We were talking about that a little bit at the end. Uh, right. Chris needs some reviews on his po- on his app. So if you want to go there and do a double review, just say something. Um, but if you want to review the podcast for us, that's always a good help for the algorithm and different things. And, you know, even if it's bad, you know, I mean, we're not afraid of it. It is I'm what it afraid. is. No, I'm not, not at shit. all. <laughs> yeah, definitely not some words on the internet. We've dealt with that over the years. And that, <laughs> yes, it is what it have. is. So yeah, go over there, check that, um, check out the reviews and, um, and maybe consider supporting on the Patreon or, uh, you know, just interacting with the page. That's fine with us. Absolutely. Uh, before we leave you, we have some songs of the week to disseminate. Uh, and, uh, Ethan, do you have anything on your list or do you want me to begin? You go first. Let me quick pull up my, uh, All my, right. no- my notes. Yeah. Perfect. I'll, I'll meander a little bit because there's a little bit of a story as to why this one is my song of the week. Uh, but my song of the week is going to be a song called California, and it's by a group called Rogue Wave. And uh, this is significant because if you've been following along, uh, Ethan and I have been hook, line, and sinkered by the OC for the last month of our lives. Uh, and it's coming to a close here. Uh, we're not. There's not too much left here. I have about they have about 20 of the 90 episodes left. And Ethan, you must have like 10 left. Like He's three got, or four. You've got, you've got four left. <laughs> oh, yeah. Holy I have. shit. I got to catch up. Oh, my goodness. So my Unroll. song of the week is from a, a season three episode. It's one of it's the last song of that episode. And, and the gang are taking their senior year of high school photo, you know, out on the steps of uh, of the Harbor High School there. And uh, it was just it caught me. I was watching it on like a Thursday night. And it just kind of, it kind of caught me in the feels a little bit and I wasn't expecting it. And the song perfectly frames the moment. And I thought back to, you know, when I was in high school and kind of, you know, the people that I was close with and what are they doing now and how different every, everybody's lives have become. And it was, it was good. Listen to that song and think about that shit. Uh, California by Rogue Wave. That's a good one. I'm surprised, uh, you know, we haven't talked about maybe that song or posted it uh, yet. Um, I thought about there's got to be uh, an OC scene, you know, that we can we can. Oh pull yeah, up and... there definitely is. So I've wanted to post them, and I've right. wanted to I've wanted to Google search like stuff about like yeah screen screen caps that I can post about the OC, but I can't yet because I don't We're want it, I don't want it to be spoiled. Um, yeah, that happened to me once when I was watching The Sopranos, and I went onto YouTube to look for um rewatch a particular scene that I had just watched and I was like maybe like a like a halfway through the show and I look I I I searched I said the Sopranos Tony and then the the next the suggestion the top suggestion just so happened to spoil one of like the bigger yeah. events in the show for right. me and I'm trying and to avoid that yeah it's and it's funny because I think I commented on a PD had posted it and I was like uh he posted his song don't tell the boys and I commented, and I was like binging the OC so I can understand this at a deeper level. And people responded and were just like, I'm so jealous that you're finding it right now. Like, enjoy, mm-hmm. you know? And that's exactly what it is. Like, although it's been out for so long, this is our first time experiencing. So we don't know where the story goes. And it's fun to, you get to be fully encapsulated. So when it gets, I hate being spoiled. Like, I, sporting events, like if I have to tape something, tape review, like, do not, do not text me. Like I'd I'd love to, I want to experience it. Like I have no, I know nothing's going on Mm -hmm. or I know nothing that's going to happen. So I think that's really important. No spoilers in life. Let it, let it just happen. I couldn't agree more. Um, My song, uh, I'm going to go with, there's an artist called Porter Robinson. And I think I, I sent an album, I know to Drew and you and our group, and um, he has a song called Language. And I remember I was out for a walk um, two weeks ago or maybe a little bit longer. And it's electronic music. And it's kind of like electronic and trance. And it's very like atmospheric and, and kind of existential, if you will. But it, it would be really cool to see at a rave or in, a, in live, a live concert with all the speakers and everything around you. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just this very, and like I said, I listened to it when I was in the air flying, and that's easily my favorite place to listen to music when you're up in the air oh, so yeah. far. Oh man, it's, it cannot be beat. It's just so good. Headphones in, dark plane. And um, so I listened to this album, and it was just a great song. And like I said, I, I remember it was a Dead Mouse clip on 
Instagram and people were, it's like, this is where it all started. And some people were like, it, it was language for me by Porter Robinson. So I went and listened to them or him and kind of got into it. And it's been fun. It's been a good journey. It's a total different, you know, it's a little bit of a different style music um, than I've ever gotten into. I mean, I've listened to EDM and, and drop step with more drops, but this is a little bit, there's not as many, like I said, there's not as many All drops. All about and it's seeking more... out different sounds and different experiences, you know? Yeah, exactly. So that's it. That is, that are the, those are the songs of the week and uh, please enjoy them. Please enjoy the show. I hope you <laughs> did enjoy this one. Yeah, enjoy the enjoy the show. Come back next week for some more and go back in the previous weeks. Try in to the words cherry of the stranger one. from the Big Lebowski. I'd have to say it was a pretty good story. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. There I go, rambling again. Yeah, here we go. We've been known to ramble, so let's uh let's not do that. I I gotta go eat. I'm I'm a little hungry. Get oh on, yeah. Get on with my Sunday as you are all hopefully getting on with your Monday or whatever day you decide to listen to this show. Thank you, as always, for your support. We love you guys. Uh, and we'll be back next week with another hard-hitting episode of the Grunge Bible Podcast. And thanks once again to the great Chris Cafaro. We love you, and we're just really thankful for you. Take care, guys. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Rock and roll.